It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy and Renee and Alex, we're all here getting over the uh, the Apple announcement. We've got some analysis, some surprises, too, from Apple, things they're not going to do. What did Tim Cook tell Charlie Rose? It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 420, recorded September 16th, 2014. Apple Hangover. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Are you looking to upgrade your IT skills or prepare for certification? IT Pro TV offers engaging and informative tutorials, now with Mac management, streamed to your Roku, computer, or mobile device. For 30% off the lifetime of your account, go to itpro.tv slash MacBreak and use the code MacBreak30. And by... Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code MACBREAK. And by lynda.com. lynda.com is an easy and affordable way to help you learn. Instantly stream thousands of courses created by experts on business, software, web development, graphic design, and more. For a free trial, visit lynda.com slash MacBreak. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash MacBreak. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show that covers all your Apple needs. And today, the Hangover Edition. <laughs> after, <laughs> after a crazy week... This is the this is kind of limbo, isn't it? Where we're waiting, where between the announcement and ordering of iPhones and the actual arrival, which is Friday. Andy Anako is here from the Chicago Sun Times, back in his lair. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I just I know I, I I might have built this up too much on Twitter, but how can I build this up too much? I'm debuting a brand new breakthrough technology right now. Now there's a little. You see, I've got a little bit of a different angle here uh, in my home studio. That's because this is being shot with my new innovation, Crane Cam 3000. <laughs> the future of video podcasting. Unfortunately, you can't see Crane Cam when Crane Cam is being used. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, well, because I'm, it's, it's it's a, a crane jib. Cam. It's a jib. I'm, no, no, it's not a, it's not a jib. If it were a jib, Leo, I'd call it a jib. It's Crane Cam Three Thousand, the future of video podcasting. Trademark. Okay, okay. TM and the I. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be incidentally looking at some of the features of Crane Cam Three Thousand, the future of video podcasting, throughout the show. I don't want to make a big deal about it. I'm just very proud because I invented Crane Cam Three Thousand, the future of video podcasting, just ten minutes before the show was supposed to start to solve a simple problem. When I decided to switch out the chair that I normally have for a chair and a table, but it caught you know again. Just like moldy bread led to penicillin and the saving of millions of lives, switching chairs has led to the creation of Crane Cam 3000, <laughs> the future of video podcasting. <laughs> Necessity is the mother of Crane Cam. I'll, I'll let you start that, the show. I'm just, I'm just very pleased fable. with Crane Cam yeah. 3000, the future of video podcasting. That's all. <laughs> is that, by the way, is that Crane Cam intercapped? One word intercapped? No, no, no. It's it's one word. Uh, we're through, it, well, it depends on the country of origin. Uh, I've got I, in the past we were a little bit late starting, so I did have time to start uh, the trademark uh, IP stuff going. Uh, so we'll depend. <laughs> well, we're, we're we're still workshopping it, but it will be Crane Cam Three Thousand Future Video Podcasting in your local country of origin, uh, pursuant to local law. <laughs> also, here how, how are you going to follow this? You uh, guys can't. I can't. Don't have Crane I can't. Cam I can't. It's all video podcasting. It's all downhill from here. That's why I'm saying hello to Renee Ritchie in Montreal, <laughs> back home. I'm sorry. <laughs> That was mean. Do you have a crane no, cam? No, I don't I, think so. I don't. I have a cam on a tripod. I have a tri-cam. Tri-cam. Tri-cam 1000. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you guys back home. Did you have fun here in the Bay Area for your brief visit? It was great. And then I started writing my iOS 8 review. Oy. And I'm now 20,000 words into the weeds. And I and there's no end in sight. So. Well, good. We'll hear at least 10,000 of those words coming yes. up. Also from his... New office in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and looking mighty fine. It's Alex Lindsay. Of course, he's looking fine. He's the king of streaming video. Hello, Alex. Hey, how's it going? Going great. 
So this is it. This yep. is the new place. You're going to get a backdrop or anything? It's like yeah, uh, yeah. No, no. Um, you know me. It will get much more complicated. Complicated. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is just give me a couple of weeks. Beta. <laughs> There's going to be a 70 inch monitor behind me, and yeah. then I'm, I'll have an array of monitors. You can't let like Crane I'm, Cam 3000 take the uh, no take the honors for no, too I'm long. Motion control yep. 4000. Yep. I, I, I believe you meant to say Crane next. Cam 3000, the future video. Podcast. Sorry, TF. Can we just say TFOVP? I know. You know, I, I I've been saying I watch all week too. It takes a while for. You know, <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Now <laughs> settle down. Settle down. Um, gosh, I don't know where to begin. Tomorrow, iOS 8 uh, ships. You know, I was kind of surprised when uh, uh, Sarah told me that yesterday on iPad today. They didn't mention that at all, did they, in the event? Or did, or did I miss it? Yeah, they announced it. They said Wednesday you'll get iOS 8. Yeah, and they've been doing that Seems for like, several years. iOS 2 came out the same right. day as the iPhone orders, and that turned out to be a bad idea no. for everybody. So yeah. they've moved it to the Wednesday. A couple of days now. earlier. Uh, yeah. Is it ready? Is it baked? Yes. Renee, you've been, you've been writing a 10,000-word review of it. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's ready. There's always going to, every zero .0 version of iOS comes with its own slew of brand new things because there's no QA in the world that can equal 100 million users hitting your software. So I'm sure there's going to be things. Uh, there'll be, we'll get battery life complaints and we'll get, you know, features that don't work exactly the way anybody predicted. But it is as, it is as ready to go as any version of iOS and, and quite a bit readier than iOS 7 was when it dropped. And I, and I guess that that's really what my, my question is, is, is should people uh, uh, install it tomorrow when it's available or it would be prudent, it sounds like, to wait a little bit. If you're a nerd, you install... But if you're a nerd, you're already running the, the Gold Master build. If, it's always good to wait. If you don't absolutely have to run it on day one, then let other people hit those day one issues. I guess I'm not a nerd because uh, I always wait for I the iOS till the actual release and usually uh, install it that day. Can you open your Christmas presents on New Year, Leo? Really? Really? <laughs> yes, <laughs> really. Well, because you don't want it to bring your thing to its knees. Interesting, the shots of iOS 8 on Apple's page, apple.com slash iOS 8, are uh, featured in an iPhone 6. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, uh, instantaneously, that whole site changed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, is is the look and feel different? It's not as different as iOS 7 was. It's it's continu continuation of iOS 7, right? So iOS 7 was the complete visual redesign, where iOS 8 is a huge functional redesign right. because you have continuity and you have extensibility and you have all the frameworks for developers like HomeKit and Touch ID and things well, like well, that. Well, not so, so fast, Canadian man. It looks like continuity. Is continuity going to be available day and date? No, they're waiting till next month, aren't they? Well, no. So, it, so it, it, continuity is several things. Continuity lets your devices all work together. So the stuff that involves the Mac has to wait for Yosemite, and SMS specifically has to wait for October. But anything, uh, for example, continuity handoff between iPhone and iPad is currently working. So all the iOS uh, functionality will work. Yeah, so you can answer calls on your iPhone. You can continue, e sorry, on your iPad. You can continue That's emails nice. from your iPhone to your iPad. So all that kind of stuff is going to work. That's nice. Uh, and 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 it's interesting what they say on the on the web page. Huge for developers, massive for everyone else. They really are saying this is an under a lot of this is under the hood. Things like extension ex, was extensibility extensions. Extensibility yeah. is the system. Extensions are what are, is I'm excited used for the individual parts. That to me is uh, is something that we've needed for a long time. The ability for apps to interoperate better within each other. Yeah, and it's it's super. It's on a super secure way. So it's actually really interesting. A couple of years ago, Apple ported XPC, which is their cross uh, app communication platform, from Mac to iOS, and then they broke Springboard in two into Springboard and Backboard. And then they built this little daemon that runs and basically coordinates all this. So the apps never really talk to themselves. You have a host app and a container app, and iOS intermediates everything so that your data is always private to those applications, unless the unless the developer makes it available to share, and you you actually do an action to choose to share it. So it's secure, it's private, but it lets you do all the, the workflows cross apps. So it's, it's really cool. It would be remiss of me to, to not point out that anybody who's been using Android for a while is going to look at these lists of new features and go, really, you didn't have that? I mean, Android L's big feature was, you know, system-wide animation. Right. So, I mean, right. they both started at different ends. We're catching up. Racing yeah. towards the middle. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but things, for instance, like a keyboard, keyboard suggestions, is something I had on my BlackBerry, I feel like. I feel like that's 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 been around for a long... In fact, I was kind of surprised to learn that iOS didn't have that. All of this, they're, they, they do all this in one way. So extensibility makes all this functionality um, possible. And because they wanted to do it all in the same way, and yeah. they even make sure that you're doing exactly the same way on the Mac, it would have been easier to do separate systems, but they wanted to make sure it worked in one way so right. developers can target it in one way. So that means they had to wait until all of that was ready to do all of it. 
So well, to, I think that uh, the other thing is I don't think that Apple is really, you know, they don't really specialize in doing, they do some things first, but I think a lot of times what they're doing is, they, I mean, they're attempting to do things right. I mean, having a, a feature list and having it work well are two very, very Yeah, some people things. say uh, Apple specializes in not innovation, but refinement. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? And I think that they do that often very well. I mean, sometimes they, they don't get it right. And sometimes they they do still do put things out, um, you know, first and, and broken. Uh, right. But, uh, but I think that one of the things that they probably do better than anyone else is look at what everyone else has done and, and really um, isolate the things that are working and not working and throwing away a lot of stuff and really focusing on just a handful of things that really work. Mm -hmm. And some people don't like that because it's very controlled and it's very uh, slow moving in, in some ways. Um, but I think that there's an, obviously a lot of people that don't want to think about it. They just want it to work. Yeah. You'll, I mean, the, the, whole, the whole package works fine. Uh, there, I think if you go through the list of things that are, quote, Android first, unquote, you will see a bunch of things that don't work as well as they probably should have. Uh, and other things where you like the way that uh, apps can interact with each other that makes you wonder, geez, I mean, this is, it works great. It's incredibly easy to use. It really ex extends the functionality of the device. Why did we have to wait so many years for this uh, on, on iOS? Yeah, and I don't want to foster this kind of silly religious war. You use what you yeah, use. Exactly, and, uh, exactly. Right. I mean, if, if if the if the if the iPhone were not a better total package for people, it would not be selling quite so well. It's not people are not buying. I disagree. Because they had, they, that's oh, that's I, that's completely un, untrue. Look at the really? look at the okay. Samsung sales, which are driven entirely by marketing. I think it's just completely fair to say that Apple has its adherence, but whether they're doing that based on an, a full and complete knowledge of the choices or because of superior marketing is not um, clear. Well. Well, that's okay. I'll agree that it's not. You're not. You're never going to be able to break that down by category. But I don't think that. It really, again, look, look at me. I was unhappy with iPhones, so I switched. I also know other people who don't have the benefit of being able to test Android phones all the time to find out what that's like. It's more like, damn, I really wish it were easier to move a file from one thing onto my phone. I really wish it were, it were easier to put something into Evernote. And then they hang out with people in their office or in their personal lives who are doing this thing. And then that's what kind of makes them curious about other things. But they might say that. Gee, I, I but I tried a, a Samsung Galaxy S4 and it felt cheap. It felt it didn't. It had all this crap on it. It makes all these stupid water noises when you move your fingers across it. I think as much as I as much as I wish I had that one feature, I'm willing to accept uh, what I have with the iPhone. I we're we're very fortunate because we get to try them all, yeah. and uh, have a probably better uh, kind of global view of this than most people do. I think we're now at the stage, and it's very much like the PC market was 10, 20 years ago, where. People have made a choice. They've gone with the platform Android, Windows Phone, or iOS. And at this point, they're just going to uh, carry on. So the, the discussion that Android, you see a lot of Android, especially Samsung fanboys posting those Samsung ads <laughs> saying, uh, hey, we've had this for two years. And, uh, <laughs> but, but, that's, to, but to the normal there's, user, that's not really germane because a, they weren't going to switch to Samsung anyway. Right. There's an interesting, I mean, Apple is also a very patient and sometimes stubborn company, and they could have made big phones years ago. They, they know how to Tim manufacture Cook said that. big phones. Yeah. yeah, they could have made extensive. Apple had projects very similar to extensibility that they started years ago, and they did not like the compromises. I mean, this at the end of the day, this runs oh. very, something very similar to OS X. They could have turned on multitasking the first version. They could have turned on inter-app communication in the first version, but they waited to get the technology right. It's very similar to how Android L does a lot of things that people say, oh, you know, iPhone had that in version one sure but if you talk to the google engineers who had to implement the gl stack and had to talk and had to get all the graphic optimizations done it took a long time to get it to the point where it works the way it does in android l none of these things are as easy as us who and none of the resources are as unlimited as us who says why don't we just take all these phones and mash them together and they'll all do everything brilliantly they're all choices about what we can do today and what we're going to choose to wait to do when we can do them the way that we want tomorrow let me let me, yeah. let me see, play this ad because a lot of people have seen it and a lot of people will see it is Samsung making a mistake saying this? When the Galaxy Note launched in 2011, it was ahead of its time. And naturally, when things are new and different, sometimes people aren't ready for them. Experts saw the bigger screen and were like, you look like you're talking into a piece of toast. The Note is an unwieldy beast. Now it's not being dismissed by competitors. It's being imitated. BGR, Boy Note. Genius Report. The truth hurts, Apple fans. You could thank Samsung for your... Big new mm -hmm. iPhone displays. It's more than big. It's about being more productive. Wait for it. I like that part. <laughs> more innovative. 
Oh, cool. And yeah, notice they're showing things that you still can't do on the iPhone 6 Plus. That's that's how, also they use an uh, D, they use an app that rips off DJ, which I think is an odd choice. Yeah, that for, is a bad choice because yeah. that looks just like DJ. Doesn't it's, you know, it? yeah. Apple thinks they're. Although, they showed let's face it, turntables are predate uh, smartphones. So, but they they showed off Active Stylus. They showed two right. apps, uh, independent apps, working side by side. Is Samsung? I mean, uh, uh, is is this uh, preaching to the choir? I, uh, somebody asked me about this on the, I think it was on the radio show, and I said that you have to understand this is for teams. This is for the team Samsung because people choose teams now. This is for the team <laughs> Samsung. Yeah. People say, "Don't worry, it's okay. You don't, you know, the iPhone isn't giving them anything you didn't already have. It's a, re it's a, it's an ad not to sell stuff, but to reassure people." Well, it's 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 a really good uh, Samsung. I think is very aware of their reputation as well. Of course, all they do is they copy stuff that Apple does. So when they have a, a case where they can legitimately yeah. say, "No, we had this years before," and everyone said that we're stupid for doing it, but it became so successful that Apple decided they wanted to have a right. phone exactly this size. So you could you you can certainly argue as to whether it's really productive to spend ad dollars and the attention of your audience talking about how hey now the thing we've had for three years now the the really famous style company that's known for doing things incredibly well has the exact same screen size so maybe you don't want to buy ours maybe you want to buy the apple one now maybe that's not a smart thing to do but yeah. uh, it's certainly a legitimate uh, legitimate operation although i do want i do want to say one thing about uh, something that, that renee said earlier there is sometimes apple waits to get things right Sometimes it's just a case of they just don't have enough interest in doing that. As good as this idea is, as easy as it would be to implement, because the the only the only reason why I, I want to uh, make a mention of that is that I think too many people talk about not not I'm not talking about Renee. I'm talking about the broader uh, uh, blogosphere uh, when they talk about well, see, Apple got it right. That indicates that well, so that the rest of us who've been using larger screen phones, we're idiots for using phone, the phones that did big, big screen wrong. No, they didn't. For the past couple of years, at least, uh, the the Galaxy Note gets fine battery life. These 4.7 and 5 inch Android phones, they certainly have no compromises whatsoever. This was just a case of Apple deciding that when uh, if we're, we're going to have to respond to this market eventually, do we want to do this right away or do we want to take our time doing it? And they simply decided that well, we're just not going to rush into this. It was the same with LTE. I mean, the Thunderbolt had LTE long before the iPhone did, and it, they were willing to make certain count compromises. The big screen Android phones, they they used Pentile RGB layouts because they couldn't do proper RGB screens, or they went with SAMOLED yeah, for, okay, for okay, battery but you, life. But you're, no, but I mean, what I'm saying is that uh, the people, yeah. uh, we get, I love that they do that. I love that Samsung does stuff early. I love that they've done six generations of smartwatches and we'll do six more before the, <laughs> I, the Apple Watch ships because I might want a smartwatch now. I want a Pebble. I, I own a Pebble because I'm not going to wait. And I like that we have the choice to get cutting edge technology today. And I like that a company like Apple has a very particular idea of what they want to want and they're willing to wait for that. And I think we as consumers benefit by having both philosophies in both companies. Yeah. That's why Android is just in the, the, Apple doesn't have the ability to do that stuff, not because they're silly or not because they're arrogant, but only because they are the only makers of iPhones. And if they want to make a big screen phone, that is going to be 50 percent of all the brand new 2014 model iPhones that are ever going to be out. So they really have to do that a lot more carefully than a maker who can say, you know what, let's this is a good idea. Let's just do it. Um, all, 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 I'm, all I want to all I want to uh, put into the discussion is that. Again, the first LTE phone was junk, but it didn't take very long for them to be not junk. And now you're just not having LTE because you don't, that's not at, you're not at that point in the roadmap for the iPhone. So, so I think I've seen some people, not Renee, uh, use this as, well, you know what? I'm glad I didn't have to use that crappy Samsung Galaxy Note through two, one, two, three, and four, because finally this is the, the big screen phone that's worth having. It's like, well, no, that's not true. That's just, you're, 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 you're buying into the logo there. And I want well, to use it also badly. Yeah. And I think also you have you have uh, lock in. I mean, you know, so, so there's a lot of people like me. Yeah. I mean, I have both. I have both phones. I have an Android phone and, a, and an iPhone, and I use them both every day, uh, almost every day. And uh, but the problem is, is that almost all my apps. I mean, all the apps that I paid for are on my iPhone. I, I'm a little resistant to starting to build up a whole a whole paid library on the on the on the. On the on my Android phone, and so it costs a lot less than your phone. I got to tell you, it's maybe fifty sorry, bucks. Yeah. You're not going to spend that much money. Your phone costs a lot more than the library of apps, I, unless you have some very unusual apps. I've got a pretty big library. So, <laughs> so, 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 so I got some expensive app. apps in there. I've got a couple yeah. apps that no, I didn't get that one yet. That's a thousand dollars, but I have a lot of them that are. I have a couple of them that are in, in the fifty to. You know, there's a couple uh, high-end film tools that are there. So anyway, so 
the point is, is that I think that I, I look at the Android right now still as something I really like my M8 actually. I, I mean, I, I definitely enjoy using it. Um, but I, uh, but I also, it's, it's still the sidekick because most of my apps that I use on a day-to-day basis are on my iPhone. I think that's going to be, that's the lock-in that Apple continues to be able to build because also because Apple users buy more apps than, than Android users where they, you know, they are getting, well, again, yeah, Maybe that they're they're a fraction of the cost of the app, but you still think about it. I've got two or hundred dollars, or two hundred dollars, or three hundred dollars worth of apps, and I've got data in there, and I've got all these other things, and and so both sides, I think, have a certain level of lock in uh, from that uh, that reality. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Apple has confirmed to uh, the cult of Mac that the NFC chip in the iPhone six will be locked down and only usable for Apple Pay. That kind of eliminates my pick of the week. I was going to show off these cool NFC rings, but. <laughs> They're no good to me now. That's why they did it, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> um, protecting you from yourself. I'm see, really curious what you guys think about this. Don't say anything. Save it. Think um, about your position. We what? also have, uh, just before we get to that advertisement, uh, just on the wire, uh, the other advertisement for Crane Cam, the future of video Oh, my podcasting. God. It's already... It's, <laughs> so, Andy, you bought ads. Okay, but that's... That's that's the two that's the crap two K model. This oh. is Frank Cam three thousand, the future video podcast. I got it. Oh, I who did got that? The wrong ad. Who did that? Is that F and done? This, no. This, this was very much. This is very much the Apple to that Samsung. One second. One that's second. the Samsung Green go. Cam. Uh, three thousand. There we are. See, oh, okay. Look at you. Again, again, you see how quickly they have to copy what the, <laughs> the market leader is doing. It's almost sad, really. Their their attitude towards intellectual property is very disappointing. I might add. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV, Tim and Don. And I mean friends. They're great guys. They came by the studio. Uh, they've come by many times. Uh, what I didn't know at the time was to steal our ideas, but that's okay. <laughs> no, I, we very freely shared with IT Pro TV. Tim and Don have been teaching people how to get uh, their IT certs, how to polish their IT skills for more than a decade. They're really good IT trainers. And they saw what was what was going on here. Uh, they were fans of Tech TV, and they said, what if we built a kind of a twit for IT professionals so they could get their uh, certs easier, have more fun doing it? And that's why they created IT Pro TV. And it is absolutely, as they say, an easy, entertaining approach to online training. I'm going to log into my IT Pro TV account so I can show you just what you'll get as a user of IT Pro TV. Um, first thing you'll note at the top of the page, there's an on-air button, and it's blinking red. That means they're live right now just as we are. You can watch them live. They've got a program guide on the right. You can chat with them just as you do with us. Hey, there's Don. And it, it does look a little bit like, see those uh, high pr 40s in the background? They got a TriCaster. They got, every, they got the same lights. They got everything we do. But what's different is this is uh, unabashedly IT focused stuff, which is really great. You can watch on your computer. You, they have a Roku app, which means you can watch on the big screen. There's Tim on the right, Don on the left, and uh, they're, I guess they're getting ready to do a show. Uh, an A plus episode coming up, uh, they said, uh, in just a little bit. Um, hundreds of hours of content on the uh, course library. Uh, they do 30 new hours a week, much, like, much as we do. And if you look, there's free content, so you can see a guided tour, sample episodes, get an idea of what IT Pro TV does. They have lots of Apple stuff now. This is something they've been adding. Integration basics for 10.9, management basics. Apple certified support professional. Apple certified technical coordinator. So if you're a Mac fan, you can absolutely get your Mac cert certs. Uh, Windows, Linux, OS X. You see there's the CompTIA stuff, including Security Plus, MCSA, MCSE, Cisco. These are the new ISC squared of the new... Uh, Security search, and they've got a really great new trainer doing the security stuff. Really enjoying that. Office. Certified ethical hacker. Yes! I want that cert. Certified ethical hacker. That's coming up in the first quarter of next year. Project management, VMware. They are Citrix uh, Zen server, Microsoft's Hyper-V servers. They're really... This is a wonderful resource. If you're an IT professional and you want to polish your skills... If you are looking to get cert so you can get a job, visit itpro.tv slash MacBreak. Now, it's very affordable. I mean, $570 a year, $57 a month. Um, but we have a special offer because they, they understand that they stole everything that we do. And there they are. There they, are. <laughs> they haven't yet started doing fezzes. That's, I'm glad to see. <laughs> no. We, 
Uh, they actually asked. They were very nice. And I said, gosh, that's a great idea. I hope you do do this. And uh, we're very pleased that from day one, we've been a, they've been a part of our family and we've been a part of theirs. They have a special offer for MacBreak viewers. MacBreak30, the offer code, you'll save 30% off for the lifetime of your account, not just monthly or yearly, but forever. That means makes it less than $40 a month at $399 for an entire year. That's less than buying the materials, you know, the reading. Oh, you look at that. So you get the measure up practice exams too. That's so you can, when you get your subscription, you can actually take the exams as you take the courses and see how you're doing so, so you know what you need to polish up. They divide the courses into actual chapters and questions on the exam so you can really focus your study. There's a no-hassle, easy cancellation policy when you do get your cert. Although I think a lot of people just keep it because it's a great way to stay up on new technologies. IT Pro TV, itpro.tv slash MacBreak. Use the offer code MacBreak30. You'll save 30% off for the life of your account. I, I really can go on and on. They have a virtual uh, virtualization lab, so if you've got any HTML5 browser on any operating system, you can go in there and set up Windows servers and set up clients and, and break it, and it's fine if I break it every time I use it. And then you just log out. You start over, and it's all fresh. ITPro.tv slash MacBreak. We thank them so much for their support of MacBreak Weekly. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but Apple has uh, confirmed uh, the report at Cult of Mac that the NFC chip in the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus will not do things like pair to speakers, uh, will not let you integrate NFC tags into your apps, will not work with things like this. This is an NFC ring that uh, I will use to unlock my Moto X, but uh, won't work with an iPhone 6. They're locking it down so it's just for Apple Pay. In fact, that since story. Apple Pay comes out next month, it won't really do anything when you get your iPhone 6 this week. What do you it's think, guys? It's a bit guys? of a weird story because um, a lot of the stuff that they say it won't do is stuff that Apple would have to enable anyway, like on, like a Bluetooth trusted object or NFC trusted object. All of those features um, would still be dependent entirely on Apple, so it's not really locked down. And the other features, some of them NFC does well. Well, well, some well of them wait a minute, though. They do don't better. turn it on is the same as they prevent it. I mean, if well, no, so uh, no, so absolutely. So the thing is, like, Touch ID came out last year, and it was it was constrained only to the two right. tasks that Apple gave it. And part of the reason for that is that Apple basically sprints to their release deadline every year right. just to get the functionality that they ship. And Touch ID is an example. They didn't have a, my understanding is they didn't have a way to secure the yes, no token so that ah. they, weren't, they couldn't prevent developers from spoofing those tokens if a malicious developer made an app. So it took them an extra few months to build it all into Keychain, and now Keychain handles that, and the yes, no tokens are safe. And my guess is that NFC, they, they had time to build it into Apple Pay and to get all the partners on board, but they haven't had time to build out an API. And to Apple's credit, they take their APIs really seriously. They use them themselves. They make sure they're rock solid. And then they support them for a really long time. They don't tend to deprecate them too quickly. So my guess is that we are getting, this is Apple's way of testing NFC, and they're testing it on themselves. And when they're happy with it, they'll build it out and probably WWC next year, the same way we got Touch ID API this year, we, we might get an NFC API next year. Actually, you, you make a good point because they did show the Apple Watch unlocking a hotel room door. And they said that this is going to be supported uh, in the, uh, what was it, Starwood Group uh, Hotels? Yeah. Or Although they the did w say that was hotels, NFC. Yeah. That could have been Bluetooth. I mean, they're, it, it might as well have been NFC, but they didn't explicitly say that. Oh, okay. All right. Well, and I think that they, that they they may make an argument that uh, because the Apple Pay is so important to them, they don't want to do anything that would open it up at all. That's reasonable. From a security perspective. You know, just, just saying, like, here's the deal. This is what we think this is what you use NFC for. We want to make it totally locked down and totally secure, and we never want to have to deal with other people possibly using that NFC because it's so integral to um, the real market that they see for NFC. Yeah. And also, Apple can make the argument that name us something you would like to use NFC for, and then they'll say, "Well, we've got a better solution for it." That's even but you don't, it doesn't require you to tap a ring against something else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's it's reasonable for Apple to be prudent. And if you've chosen the Apple team, if you're on Team <laughs> Apple, then you're used <laughs> to this. Oh, Team Apple. <laughs> well, and I want to point out, by the way, that we try, we really try hard not to be on a team here at twit and uh, it's not we, always we, easy we'd be, we be picked last anyway so it doesn't really yeah happen. right no, we're we, used we to, want we're... them to be on our team we want we don't want to fight over them we want them to fight for I'm us i'm on team user and uh, and yeah. so one of the advantages we have is we can try all this stuff and we hope to give you a fair unbiased look at all of it through our, all of our shows so a lot of people tune into mac break and say well leo you're insufficiently worshipful of apple <laughs> and uh, that's not i don't consider that to be our job um 
So, uh, but I have I do have to say on the NFC front, while uh, it is great that NFC is supported by uh, other phones in 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 its entirety, I also understand. Look at uh, if you're on Team Apple, you're used to this. Apple Pay not till October. The rest of continuity not till October. Photos, right? When is that coming out? Isn't that next year? Yeah. Uh, for the Mac next year. For the Mac next year. Is it going to be on iOS 8 right away? Uh, I've heard conflicting things about it. It was in the betas yeah. and now it's, it's specifically labeled beta outside of the beta. So we'll see. So you're so in other words, this is whether because Apple, I think some of it could be argued that Apple has constrained resources there uh, and, and just can't. And by the way, it's not a lack of money or or a lack of office space. The constrained resource is brilliant programmers yeah. and uh, and great programmers. Willing to work in Cupertino. Who are willing to work. No, I think <laughs> Apple would open an office in any city in the world if that's where they needed to go to get the people who would write this stuff. But there just is a, I, I think that that is truly a constrained resource. They want to do it and they want to do it right. So I, I don't think that that's, I think that's when you choose Team Apple, that's what you choose. You ch you choose to not necessarily be on the cutting edge, but you you choose to be refined, which makes it all the more upsetting when Apple fails to be refined, and that happens from time to time, mm -hmm. right? Because you chose you chose Team Apple because you wanted it to work. I'll give you an example, maybe, and maybe Peter Cohen says I am full of it, <laughs> but this U two thing seems to me to be a fiasco. It's certainly no. not the story that they wanted to have come out of that yeah. event. So uh, it's, 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 I love it's, the posting it's, people put up of uh, U2 uh, in 19, uh, maybe it was 2007, says, people are stealing our albums. We are not giving these away. And then eight years later, and, 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 and eight years later, they have to put out an app to show you how to get the, U the free YouTube album off of your iPhone <laughs> and iPad. Uh, can, can, can you imagine the conversation as they're planning this out and saying, okay, get, we're, we're, we're go, we're going to actually do this, great. Now, but before we actually pull the trigger on this, is there any way whatsoever we can imagine anybody being upset about getting a free album? No? Okay. You know, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask, okay, let's go ahead with this. And now like, the people are so desperate to find something to say that well, Apple did not think of this and something no, didn't I will work defend. Properly. I will defend these people. I think this what Apple did was wrong. So Apple gave away the album, but now normally when they give away free stuff, you go to iTunes, you click the button, you say, yes, I want that free thing. They did not do that with U2. They put it on my iCloud. Boom. And if I have my phone or iPad set up to auto-download any new purchases, I have a U2 album I didn't choose on my iPhone or iPad, yeah. and I have no good way to get or had. They've had to fix that, but there was, there is no good way to delete music without having to attach it to your... So... That's absolutely wrong. They pushed that album okay. to people. But we're, but well, does this qualify for the word fiasco? Does this qualify for the <laughs> word nightmare? This is, I think they, they could have qualified for the word spam. I don't know. I think also, also there's precedent for this. Amazon's music service does this. Uh, Google's music no. service does this. What are you this. talking about? No, it does there, not. I have yeah, never, no, there, if I want a free album on Amazon, I have to click it and buy it, and then it comes to my phone. It does there not appear there on are, my phone there, automatically. My Nexus 7 came with Transformers, the movie. It's appalling. Well, that's, there, that's comparable there, to that. That's spam. I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying. First of all, that that has happened on, or on the, at least on the early days, where they they have free giveaways, and now there's stuff in my library that I didn't download, which is not offensive. It's just that okay, now a, a, a piece of music that I don't like might turn up on shuffle play unless I get rid of it. So I, I certainly agree that they could have thought another step ahead and seen, given that Apple has never done this before, and also they well, why are didn't not they the do company, it the same way the, they give away that, free, and also that they're not the company you associate with. Something I did not ask for has suddenly appeared in my library. Apple gives away. Free music that. every week. They know how to do it, and they decided intentionally not to do it this way. Yeah, I, I, I bet that must have had something to do with you what, too. Uh, you too getting paid for each copy, and it doesn't work unless people are. It doesn't count unless people actually well, are. I think it also, it also so you too could say, "Hey, two million people downloaded our new album." Yeah, and I'm not sure if it. I haven't seen it yet. I, I, I've been looking for whether that, that that's going to be recorded in the Billboard charts. You know, whether you two. I bet you it is. Right, because because it should be that should be a you know a tracked item of how many people downloaded it on iTunes, and and so I think that um, the the thing is is that I don't know if this one actually worked, but I think that if um, you know the music industry should pay really close attention to what Apple just did there because they are they are whether this one worked or not. 
um, this is a shot across the bow. This is a, we will roll you into the ground if we feel like it. If we can distribute an album to 500 million people and pay whatever they paid you to, but I mean, they could pay a lot of bands, 1 million, 5 million, $10 million to, for the album. It's nothing to Apple to do that. And, you know, they could really position iTunes in a level, you know, now that there's all kinds of antitrust questions and everything else, but there are, you know, the, this is the, you know, the stuff that, that I've been talking about for at least a little bit, which is that, that when it comes to movies and, and, and comes to music, Apple has a huge distribution pipe that they're just barely, bare, barely utilizing. And this is the first time I've seen them really show, you know, what a fully operational battle station well, can look and like. And now they need to understand <laughs> that that is considered by many users spam. And Apple had yeah. to, I think em it's embarrassing that Apple had to publish a page with a button yeah. that says, oh, oh, here's how you get rid of that. <laughs> Leo, Absolutely. Leo, is it Absolutely spam agree. or is it, I think it might be deeper than that. I think we're starting to understand what it is to have digital content and digital possessions and digital territory. And that there are some people for whom that was an invasion, the same way Amazon pulled 1984 out of people's Kindle libraries, Apple pushed. That's an invasion. Uh, you gave them hell for that. Yeah, I mean, it's not new. I mean, it happens in a million ways. You get pre-installed apps on your phone. The iBooks came with the Winnie the Pooh thing. My Nexus That's 7 different. came with Transformers. Yeah, it is different. This what I used like my is bandwidth to download onto my phone. Absolutely. And that's that's what I like about this discussion. And there there is an argument that, you know, we pay more attention to this stuff than we do to incredibly important social issues that exist beyond our digital domain. But I think this is very personal to us. Our devices are very personal to us. And we have to figure out, I mean, there's stuff going on about ownership. When you pass away, what happens to your digital library? And all of this is making that issue tangible. I mean, we have licenses to songs and companies can push and pull them from our devices and we need to figure that out. And I have to say, uh, it, I would feel less upset about this if this was the mechanism, but it is not how Apple has distributed free music in the past. They have a very good right. mechanism for doing that, and they elected, and I cannot think of any other thing to say, but intentionally not to do it. It also underscores yeah. the issue uh, with uh, Apple devices of how hard it is to remove content from your device. Although I think it's easier with iOS 8. You can swipe and... and yeah, it will be, and that's good. News. That's a huge improvement. I also um, wonder how much of this is you too. Like, if it had been a hotter band, like a more modern, hotter band. Oh, absolutely. So much. Absolutely. And by the yeah, way, yeah. I love you too, and I have all their albums. But, but I think uh, that also it's it's a it's a less controversial band for them to test this. If you're testing something, uh, testing an, an idea, you know, if they had done Arcade Fire, oh or yeah, something, you can. A lot yeah. of people would be really Dr. excited. Dr. Yeah. But my parents would yeah. be much more like, <laughs> right. why is this on my phone? You know, my, you know. And so I think that U2 is a is a more known entity. If you're going to test a system like this using someone with that popularity and that. Um, broad spectrum. I mean, obviously, there's people that are upset. I'm, I'm going to bet that it's less than half a percent. And I should point out, everybody's saying, well, Leo, you didn't have to have auto to download turned on. I didn't, and I didn't download on my phone, but many, many did. We don't know how many of those two million downloads were automatic and unintentional. And it's a natural thing to have auto download turned on. I don't think any reason, you know, it says auto download is if I buy an album on the iTunes store, I want it to appear on my phone. You yeah. have every right and expectation that that would be only if I buy an album. And okay. Apple to and use that to spam people's phones is wrong. Period. Okay, but can, can we can we have perspective here? We have we have Google's uh, Google's fiasco is the uh, what does it matter? Public, is accident? Well, no, I'm 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 saying that is it does, does it, it make it not as, wrong because it, Google did something? It, I'm, does it qualify as a fiasco? Does this qualify as someone should get fired from this? Does it, does it qualify as late night comedians need to be talking, need, need me to make this the lead off monologue joke for four nights about this? No, I just wish that there were a little bit more perspective about it. I'm shocked that this was as opposed this, that this is not anything more than oh, okay, that was stupid, that was ham fisted the way they did that. I'm, I'm just shocked we're using the word fiasco when it comes to this. No, I don't know if it's a fiasco. I think it's embarrassing for Apple to have to make it's a page it's embarrassing to say how to remove enough. something from your phone that they put there. I will, I will say that in the at the keynote, I expected that the way they would deliver this is that the next time I open the the iTunes app on any device, there'd be, oh, by the way, here's a free album. Click on this and you'll get that free album. So I agree with you 100%. It's, Andy, it's, 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 death by a thousand, it. it's death by a thousand cuts. No, it's not a big deal by itself. But, but it's, also, Apple, it's, also it's not, Apple hubris, and I think that it's, a, it's an example of kind of a widespread mindset at the uh, apple campus and i okay, and that bothers me but, re but realize but realize yeah. there's there's sometimes there's a fine line between hubis and schadenfreude <laughs> that's, 
That's all I'm saying. That, that's really true. That's, <laughs> and that's our show title, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the difference Two between you, shot in Fredo. You're mixing Greek we're, and German, but I don't care. Leo, 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 and I are going to be our, our music called Double High. I'm, I'm, I'm hubris. I'm He's shot in Freud. Freud. <laughs> We've got Jinx and Jones for you. <laughs> no, I don't look. Hey, I, did I raise this uh, on any other show on this network? No, but it is an issue on Mac Break Weekly because it's a strange no, thing agreed. to do. Agreed. It's, and I, it's you know, I, I, there were apologists who said, and Peter Cohen on uh, I More is one of them who said, "Oh, come on." No, it's not an. No, oh, he's on. not an apologist. He's a grumpy sob. It's a very subtle. <laughs> I love difference. Peter. <laughs> By the way, and Peter knows. I hope he knows. I love him. And uh, he just couldn't. He, like, he understood. He just couldn't believe that, uh, given all the other stuff that we could be yelling each other about, that that was top of people's well, lists. People say about. that. Yes, I know. You know, there's horrible things happening in the world today, and we could make all our shows about ISIS, but we are in fact not. And there are topics that each show covers. Well, I mentioned this previously, Leo, but and like this is funny because Canada is a very relaxed country and all this stuff happened and we didn't say anything. But when we got the iPhone 3G and data was still $200 oh, for 100 yeah. megabytes, I remember that. we took to the streets. Yeah. We didn't take to the streets for war. We didn't take to it for financial <laughs> reform. We didn't take to it for Medicare. We took to the streets over data for our iPhone. We have yeah. a very interesting like, barometer for what's important to us. And the people, uh, there are people in chat saying, come on, it was a gift. Get moving. Yes, you could say that if you're a spammer as well. Hey, I sent you a gift email. Santa Claus came down my champion <laughs> chimney and put it under my tree. He came into it's my a house. Gift. Yeah, well, uh, I, I believe in Santa Claus. That's true. Hey, I didn't see, I have yet to see, I tried to TiVo and it didn't record Tim Cook's uh, Charlie Rose interview. I understand it is now up uh, for free viewing. Um, That's good. Yeah, tell us about it. What, uh, what, I didn't see it. What do you say? A lot of it was talking points, but it came off very sincerely. I mean, some people have said it was unscripted, and I can believe that uh, because he's he's absolutely adept enough uh, at, at talking on interviews now to do that. But he's he was very mea culpa about maps. He said it was a mistake, that it shouldn't have launched the way there's that it an, did. There's and, a thing I'm surprised we're still talking about. <laughs> well, no, because Charlie Rose asked him because, you know, yeah. and Tim Cook said that when you run as fast as Apple does, sometimes you fall down and sometimes you fall on your face and you have to get yourself up and you have to do everything you can to make it right. And, you know, he was very candid about that. He was He spoke about how you could still take every prop, uh, product Apple makes, put it on a table, and that you know generates hundreds of billions of dollars of revenue for them. And it puts them in a unique position to be able to pick and choose sort of the categories that they want to enter. Um, it, overall, I, I was I was impressed with the, with the way he conducted himself. Part two is on tonight on Bloomberg TV and uh, some PBS stations. Um, I mean, I thought one of the interesting things that, that he said between the lines was that, and I can't, I don't I can't remember exactly the, the wording, but it was basically that what Apple wants to continue to do is just make great hardware that works. And, you know, it's kind of an open-ended statement. And I think that when we look at, um, you know, the, the home kit and a lot of other things, I mean, these are really, you know, and, and Apple Pay, um, these are really setting up for an awful lot of opportunities for a lot of people, but also for Apple when it comes to hardware development. He yep. put lie to the rumor that Apple might be in the market for Path. He says, no, we're not. <laughs> Ping was enough. We're not doing social networking. <laughs> uh, and I think that's wise. Apple has enough trouble with networking, period. I think that it'd be silly for them to have a Apple. Although... Well, it's arguable what he said. I mean, he said Apple's not making a social network, and you could arguably take features from Path and include them in messages without having to turn it into a social True. network. Messages is, in a way, a social network. In fact, I tell you, one of the things that, that slow, I, I'm, I have an iPhone on order, of course, of uh, both versions of the 6, uh, and we'll have them on Friday. Um, but one of the things that makes me nervous, and you, you can reassure me here, about uh, using the iPhone is messages. It, it, Apple does not foster going back and forth between Android. If you, Once you start using messages, you kind of, isn't that going to be an issue for me? It depends how you use it. It will assign you to Apple servers. And if you don't unassign yourself, then people who are also on iOS will be sending you things to your Apple address. That I won't see if I'm not address. on my Apple. Yeah, yeah. so you'd have, you'll have to go turn that off. How do you, is you there a way to turn that to, off? Yeah. I thought you had to yeah, call Apple there, support. There's actually a switch in, in the settings. In, in in prefs in the prefs for that account, there's like a whole bunch of here are different here are all the different ways that you, this any user can contact you, and there are phone numbers, there are email addresses, and you just have to go in and check off everything except for that one phone number that's attached to that one SIM card. Okay. Every time every time I use messages, I get messages on all my Apple devices. You've just signed up another email. It's like 80 emails now. Yeah. And I mean, and it makes me. It just I feel like 
<laughs> there's some, some so one force. thing that scares me is that it, all this stuff is instant now when i was doing messages you know back in the old days you wrote something or you inserted something and then you hit send but thanks to all these new sticker apps right. you just touch something and it goes and ios is like that now you you do the sound thing you move your thumb up and it sends you tap location and it sends and i i get scared because i think i'm going to just horribly embarrass myself Why do they with do these that? everybody messages. does that the stickers the uh, on facebook it. messenger you you don't have to say okay now send a sticker you just choose it and boom, that somebody's got your stupid sticker. Terrifies yeah. me. I, I, I honestly think that if anybody made a messaging app that was literally called the mommy and daddy message, <laughs> meaning that this is for if you're over the age of 30, here's the message. Here, it will be just like SMS. I don't want to it, will, it will verify things for you. Because honestly, message, messages is uh, on uh, on Mac OS has always, and even on iOS, has always been like the coleslaw that you get in a, in a diner. It's always there. It's never very good. And there's no way to solve <laughs> the problems that it presents. Uh, because I've, if Apple just simply said, we're not going to reinvent messaging, we're going to give you an SMS app. And then we're also going to give you a chat app. And there will be two right. separate apps. And one will work well for what you want it to do. The other one will work well and predictably for these other things you want it to do. That's, I mean, I'm, I'm with Renee. It's like the number of times that I've been using like beta software of certain something. And I've typed a message saying, wait a minute, is this about to send it or is this not to send? And I've actually hit, okay, how about if I hit hold down the command key and type Q just to make sure that the next thing I do does not send just some random <laughs> text to some place I don't believe. I'm sorry. Well, I, I, I've, been using, I've, been using, I've been using messaging for like decades. I should not be this confused. Or scared. And, and, and I, and, and I yeah, exactly. You're scared. I, there's only a handful of people that I even use iMessages with anymore. I mean, there's a, you know, there are a couple, a couple holdouts in my company and, and my wife. Well, you're a Google <laughs> Hangouts guy, it. right? So well, the so newly empowered guys, Hangouts, is that your choice for messaging? Or? So yeah, 99% of my, yeah. of my chatting with everyone is with Hangouts because I'm on I'm on any desktop that I'm logged into, and I and, and it all shows up there. So I'm right back into the conversation. So if I need to cut and that's paste my, something that's into my a browser, only nervousness. I think it's easy to go back and forth between uh, uh, Android and iOS, except for that. If you use Google well, I mean, services, it's really easy. Okay. Yeah. 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 So if you're using, yeah. If, if, so what happens is, I'm if you I'm can logged tell in, it's been a while since I used an iPhone. <laughs> it's like, right. Guys, is it gonna be all right? Leo, take our hand. We've been here before. We know the way out. <laughs> yeah, well, that's. I count on you guys. Exactly. I mean, uh, Cook I'm also said hangouts. iCloud wasn't hacked. He called it a phishing expedition. That's reiterating Apple's press release of that week. Um, he said he didn't see it coming that he would become CEO. He said he knew yeah. that it was in the long-term plan. I, I don't know how you don't know this. Doesn't Jobs at some point, he's, he's, he's not in good shape. He's dying. Go to Tim Cook and say, you know, kiss the ring. I would like mm -hmm. you to be uh, the next he king. He knew, just not then. Again, he didn't think it would exactly. be that day. In oh, context, I see. I think, I, think, yeah. I think that he was holding out hope that, okay, Steve is certainly not going to be getting a lot better, but he's not going to be getting a lot worse. For He's not going to be getting worse in the immediate future. Because there was so. an interim where uh, Steve stepped down, let Tim run the company, the, and it always was the thought he'd come back. He did come back, and then he died. So Tim knew that he would be running the company, but he just didn't expect him to die. Is that yeah, it? And he thought that Jobs would be chairman for a long time ah, after he became CEO, too. Okay. Yeah. He Poor said he Tim. always bounced back in the past, and he, he thought he would bounce back again. Also, I love this tidbit. Uh, Jobs' office is untouched. Yeah. yeah. I would. I, that floor. must be something, huh? Have you? Has anybody be ever weird. been up there? Never. No. I, I think it'd be weird to... Break it, break it down. You couldn't. I think, I think it, I mean, you kind of feel like you just kind of want to seal it off. You know, I, I, I know that it seems like a, a little bit of a, of a, you know, I don't know, uh, mono, you know, um, but, but I think that it's, it, it, it is, it, it would be odd to take his office out of Apple. Although I guess yeah. they will, will they shut down one infinite loop when they open the big uh, spaceship campus? Oh, right. No, I think they've already said that even the big spaceship campus won't hold everybody. So they're going to keep one <laughs> infinite loop. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Jeff says, when I die, they're going to do the same for my studio. Would you would just leave that there just as, as if I might come back at any moment? A time capsule. Leo, the, the qualification there, it's like asbestos. It's better to just seal and contain than try to remove. <laughs> <laughs> just put some, some oh. visqueen over the door and tape it down real good. No, no, no. Don't, don't turn left. That's the Chernobyl <laughs> ring. <laughs> it's we got it's another worth 23 years. It's worth pointing out that iOS 8, the, the, the GM release, also closes all those back doors that, you know, Jonathan blogged about this last week. So the re, the file relays and the, the packet sniffers, I all of those. I thought that was interesting. All the things that uh, Jonathan Jodarski had uh, yeah. talked about in his uh, speech uh, at 2600, at uh, Hope, I've been, all of them have been fixed. Apple, because yeah. he had those questions for Apple at the end of his talk. It sounds like Apple responded. They didn't yeah. remove the services. They just made them impossible to get to for anybody. That's what you want. Um, 
Yeah. Now, is it still going to be the case that once I authenticate with a computer that, that a phone is authenticated with that? Because that was one of the issues. I believe so, but now having that token doesn't really get you anything because all of the ah, stuff that you could get to perfect. previously is, is totally secure. Nice job. I think it's generally the, the, the belief, despite this uh, iCloud phishing scheme, it's generally felt by most people that Apple is more secure, that this trusted uh, security token and all of that is is better than anything else out there. I don't know if it's that they're more secure, but they made a very big point at the watch event it. to say that their business model doesn't involve our personal data. So, for example, yeah. with Apple Pay, they don't they don't care what you're buying, how much business. it costs, or who the merchant is. Right they're now. not giving the merchant the number. Um, and e some companies find that data incredibly valuable. A lot of companies find that marketing information incredibly valuable. Apple makes their money on the devices, so they have the luxury of saying, we don't care about that, and including that as a differentiator in their message. Yeah, I think the big differentiator for them, is, though, is that this is one area in which really contr controlling the whole widget is the only way that you could put payments on a phone, and I would absolutely trust it completely right. uh, because it is locked up very, very tight. The path is very, very closely guarded. Uh, it is true that I would trust Apple mo more than most companies Companies. Um, and but it is interesting that this is a part of the part of the uh, ongoing messaging of Apple that remember that we're we want to sell you new hardware we want to sell you services we we are not in the business we are not in a position where having that information benefits us in any way which is an important differentiation but sometimes it, uh, it, I, I've been again playing with the, the Android stuff and also playing with the, the the Moto Watch with the notifications on the from Google now and sometimes it's kind of okay to give information to a server to a service if they can turn that into wonderful experiences uh, but I, I think Apple's very very good to make sure that this is something that different as, as we get into a, a, a world in which the differences between what Apple does and what Google does become more of an apples and oranges sort of thing as opposed to Apple versus newer, fresher, better, more tasty, more nutritious Apple. I think Apple's going to have to really make the, these points about how philosophically we are different from this other company. It's not just features. It's not just hardware. It's not just what we're doing this year. Philosophically, this is what we're about. I think that's a smart uh, way to position themselves. He does say, say in this interview that Google is Apple's top competition. Um, I think that was said with with a lot of respect too. Yeah. I didn't I didn't hear there was no hatred in that. It was no, we are you know we are Popeye and Bluto. We are equally matched. We could basically keep fighting till the heat death of the universe because we are the two most powerful in this space, uh, any space that we operate in. Yeah. And the fascinating thing to me is, and John Gruber pointed this out last week, is that Google is so many people's big competitor now because they're in Apple's business, they're in Microsoft's yeah. business, they're in Amazon's business. Yeah. It's hard to imagine any tech company that Google isn't directly competing against now. Well, and it's gone back a little bit to the pre-Steve uh, pre Jobs thermonuclear war era where uh, Eric Schmidt from Google was on Apple's board and there was this, you know, kind of great collegial competition. And as a user, that's what I want to see. I think the competition is very healthy. Yeah. Um, it, but it can't be lawsuits and, you know, invective. It has to be on-the-ground innovation who, who's going to make the better product? Let's let's see. Let's do it. Yeah. But I think that all of that, of course, was collegial before before Google released the phone. <laughs> no, that, and that's when Jobs went thermonuclear. And yeah, right. um, but uh, that's fine. I mean, look, Google's going to do things that are right there in Apple's. I don't think we'd have backyard. a five and a half inch phone. I don't think we'd have a lot of the features that are on the iPhone if uh, if Android didn't mm -hmm. exist. I think we all benefit a great, great deal from that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I'm also I'm also really cheered to see them uh, see this at this highest level them referred to as a competitor as opposed to no they only got where they were because right. they have us to copy from and steal from and that's a very good way to talk yourself into being lazy and saying they're not very smart they're not innovative right. they're not creating coming up with great stuff they're just copying us we don't have to we don't have to challenge ourselves at all so yeah I mean this is uh, this is such a great time to be into technology this is such a great time to be in the market for great stuff because we have two people uh, two organizations that really want to out dazzle each other and really move things forward it's it's a wonderful time that's a, that's the, exactly the right attitude yeah. uh, i agree with you 100 percent. that's the message about Cook amazon had. yeah he said they made a phone <laughs> no one and buys a couple it. tablets <laughs> <laughs> they, made, they, they made a phone shaped object it it will <laughs> ben heck also made a phone if you were watching his video series <laughs> yeah uh, Tim, uh, tonight on uh, the uh, uh, show, will say, quote, our business is not based on having information about you. You are not our product. Our products are these and this watch and Max and so forth. And so we run a very different company. I think everyone has to ask, how do companies make their money? Follow the money. I've said this for years. Yeah. And if they're making money mainly by collecting gobs of personal data, I think you have a right to be worried. 
No, I might disagree with that. I think, but I think yeah. you should you, you in, understand in, in that. And he says you should I, really understand what's happening to that data and the companies, and I think should be very transparent about that. And I agree with him 100 percent on that. Yeah, but I, I agree in broad strokes. But so, sometimes the I, I as I, I I've always believed uh, at least modern Google has always been about a the transaction between yourself and the company. Where here are the services they can provide to you, and here's right. how great those services can be if they let if you let them see part of your life. You have to decide, but also realize that th their profile of you is what funds all that free stuff they're giving you. If you're okay with that, great. If you're not okay with that, that's fine too. And I've heard I've heard that people inside Google have the same sort of arguments about personal data and things like that that we do, which is yep. reassuring. But people that. at different points in their lives find different things valuable. And you pay with money if you can afford money. If you want free software, you pay with time because it takes you a while to compile it and build it yourself. If you want, if you don't have either of those things, you can pay with attention or you can pay with data. But you're you're just choosing what you find of value and you're giving it to somebody in exchange for a good or service. Well, so uh, it's entirely uh, your choice. But the, a a but, good or service? Did you say that? Yeah, well, I mean, like, like some phones are subsidized because you're willing to take on, uh, because you're willing to share data with them. There's yeah. all sorts of ways in which you're paying for things. It's, it's, it, you can't no, say that anything is free or cheap. I make that, well, that I just... make that very clear in my mind. I make that very clear transaction. I'm giving Google a lot of information, but because I value Google now and having the watch tell me, you yeah. know, it's a five minutes to work, but there's traffic and all and of that. Some people stuff just want to save ten bucks on email, and they're cert they're absolutely happy to have Gmail save them that yes, money. Yes, absolutely. And I think there's a, there's also a lot of us that just don't think we're that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like, I, I'm not that worried about them. I mean, I just don't do very many interesting things. Well, I mean, there is a difference, and we've, we've, got, we've talked about this ad, ad, ad nauseum, so I won't, I won't belabor it. But there is a difference between taking that information and selling ads against it versus taking that information and giving it to an insurance company or the federal government. The, those are Absolutely. lines that they, you know, we don't want them to cross. Race of uh, alien and, and I think Tim is exactly right. They need, the companies need to be absolutely transparent about what data they collect and what they do with the data. Absolutely. That's you yeah. know, I, I, that, that's why again this, this isn't the the Google Defense uh, show, but it's no, we have usually one of those, when, so it's okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's 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 surprising that when you find that there's a piece there's a piece of delay that you're shocked and horrified that that Google is collecting on you, actually there is a panel where you can go and say, oh well, stop collecting that information. Right. Oh, okay. Oh. And, oh, and there's another oh. button underneath that delete all the information you've collected about me about this so far. Right. Okay. It's, it's not. It's not. That's not always the case, and it's not always satisfactory. But it's good to know that they're not like Facebook, where it's like, okay, well, you don't use us, right? The, yeah. Don't don't right. don't see the part. Don't see the photos from your niece's uh, college graduation party. We're fine. Although with I that. turned off web history, and it that turned off Google Now, which I was sad about. I know you need yeah. to. <laughs> you're not yeah. going to get some of those tools. That's the price you pay. Uh, not that it only worked. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. we're going to take a break. <laughs> I want to come back. I, we haven't talked about the uh, watch at all. I almost said it, but I didn't. The uh, <laughs> Apple Watch at all. Yep. Yep. Apple Watch. Uh, I want to talk we've about got, the Apple got, Watch. And Leah, we've got some great questions maybe after the break. Uh, oh, let me tell some... people about that because we haven't mentioned it. If you go to yeah. twit.to slash mbw420, that's this episode, 420, the question engine is working, and uh, you can go there and ask a question, or more importantly, go there and vote questions up because pretty much all the questions have been asked probably by now, but it's a question of picking the ones uh, you want us to answer. We'll answer the most upvoted questions in a little bit. Thank you, Alex Lindsay, for providing that uh, question engine. Again, question engine, twit.to slash mbw420. Our show today brought to you by our good buddies at squarespace.com. We use Squarespace for our Twit blog. And well, now my phone's, oh, somebody's calling me, so I, I apologize. My, my wrist is buzzing. Or is that your heartbeat, Alex Lindsay? You're sending it to me from here. Now, now, my, now everything's ringing. <laughs> Our show is brought to you by Squarespace. Better websites for all at the best place to make your website. One of the things you'll see right there, look at on iPhone, your website looks great, but it also looks great on an iPad. It also looks great on a 27-inch iMac. That's because all Squarespace sites are automatically mobile responsive. That means they you don't have a different site for mobile. You have one site that fits every possible screen size. And that is beautiful. And it's just a simple example of how Squarespace makes it easy for you to create a website. It's web hosting so that they have the, they host your site. By the way, the best hosting I've ever seen. Never goes down. Always robust. Always reliable. Tied to the best content management system, the best software. And that tight integration means they can give you stuff no one else can. Plus, they've got great developers and, they, and they're constantly improving their technology. This is hard to do. Uh, it's not. It doesn't take long before a, a web system like this could look outdated. 
uh, and a lot of them do. There are other places you can go to get web hosting and software and so forth. And they don't keep it up to date. They don't have the best engineers. They don't have things like mobile responsive design, e-commerce on every single template. Um, the templates are constantly being improved. Beautiful code if you ever look at the code. You don't need to know CSS or JavaScript, of course, but if you do, they have a developer platform that means the sky's the limit. You start by uh, going to, this is something else that no one else offers, absolutely free two-week trial, no credit card required. Just visit squarespace.com, click the Get Started button, choose one of these gorgeous templates. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, so don't agonize over it. Just pick one. You can import content from your existing site, including all the images, all the links still work and everything, and then change the template. Change it again. Change it again. Mess with it. Update it. Put in widgets. All of that stuff, it's there for you, and, and the content's never tied to uh, the template or the design, so you can always move around. It's really nicely done. This is just modern, state-of-the-art. Need some support? Don't worry. They've got the best support in the business right from their own offices. They don't outsource their support. They also have a great uh, support website for you to take webinars, view videos, get all the information you need. Squarespace really is doing it right. They know how to do it. They know what you want, and uh, and they're offering it. And by the way, it starts at $8 a month. <laughs> wow. For uh, for all of this, including e-commerce. Um, and if you register for a year, you get the domain name for free. So that's good. Squarespace.com. I want you to try it right now with the offer code. Actually, you don't need an offer code to try it, but uh, if you decide to buy, use the offer code MacBreak to get 10% off your new account. Squarespace.com. Better websites for all. We love them. Another company we've been with since almost the beginning. This was always kind of my, uh, my vision for Twit is that we would have partners that we work with that are... I, I know that perhaps a lot of you who watch all of our shows have seen these ads and they know, you know all the stuff I'm telling you. But I love the idea of, of growing with a, uh, a partner. Um, and I just feel like that's, that's for, for you guys, that's the right way to do this. So, watch. Now, I have to say, when I was watching the event, and you guys were as well, you were there, and I, I, I got excited. Yeah, I'm always excited by new shiny things, but uh, some of that is worn off over time. And I'm a little concerned that this watch, A, does not uh, live up to the promise Apple has of taking an existing category and reinventing it so that it suddenly makes sense. I don't feel that they did that. And B, um, refining a product, it looks more like a sh almost shovelware. They put in so many odd features, like the heartbeat, the drawings, uh, the animated emojis, that I had to kind of want ask myself, have they made this better or just different? I'd love to hear what I, all of you think. You guys, Renee and, and Andy, touched it. Yeah, we we even tasted it. I don't, well, I can't speak for Renee. <laughs> Did you lick it? Uh, As you know, and uh, this was true when um, this was true. By the way, when uh, the iPad came out, a lot of people who didn't touch it didn't get it. But those of yeah. us who did really said, "Oh, you know, this is there is something here." And and we also we should also remember that this is several months away from being released, uh, just like the iPhone was was released that way. The excuse me was announced that way. The iPad was announced that way. Um, I do think that Apple's announcement was a little disconcertingly vague, uh, but that's the same was kind of true with the iPad, where they kind of knew what they were showing off, but they knew that not until developers were writing apps for it would it really emphatically say this is what the iPad is and what it's about. That said, I really was left remembering, uh, whereas I left the iPhone and the iPad announcements feeling really revved up and excited about this thing. With the iWatch, I'm more of a cooler, calmer sort of reaction of looks very interesting. Let's wait for them to tell us more of this story. There's a lot that's very, very weird. Um, I thought that uh, I wrote, or had to write, uh, wound up writing 6,000 words about the iWatch in two different articles last week. Um, and one of the one of the concerns is that you here you have like a device it's it's a watch and it's a small small screen and it's not probably not designed to be something that we spend a lot of time just walking around actually focusing on and yet it has how many different controls does it have it it has a tap it has a press it has a a scrolling wheel it has another clicky wheel uh, and that's to say nothing about uh, on-screen gestures they chose to show us the application launcher which is this immense constellation of dots that's so dense that you have to sc scroll in and then scroll around to tap what you want um i felt i i've, I've i'm 
coming to absolutely no conclusions whatsoever. But it did leave me with a lot of questions as, as to does Apple think of this as a device that is going to be an immersive experience where here is another screen for your attention, but it's in a much more convenient location? Or is it going to be something more like Android where, where the idea seems to be, no, this idea is that the, the idea of this device is to make sure you spend less time looking at screens, not more. The last, the last uh, I'll, I'm sure Renee has a lot to say, so I'll just wind up by saying that the, the signature thing that really left me confused on the ride back from Cupertino up to San Francisco to my hotel is that, geez, they showed us navigating through photos, through iCloud photos on this watch, which is here you see this essentially this smudge of color that you scroll in you zoom in on and it turns into like a patchwork of all your photos organized by uh, by time and in uh, place and i'm thinking okay that's nice but i this requires an iphone my iphone is definitely in my pocket while i'm zooming through phone uh, photo land i can't think of a single situation in which I would want to select a photo from my watch. The only thing I could come up, I could barely come up with, is well, what if you want to message somebody uh, a photo? And then I'm, th I'm thinking, well, no, I th for that I would probably still take my phone out of my pocket because it's a much the, the given that we didn't, we didn't get a chance to try out the actual interaction of these of this hardware, it seems as though it'd be much easier to pick out a photo and SMS it from my phone than it would from the watch. So I'm just left not skeptical and not. Uh, with a negative impression, but thinking that, okay, I now know what it looks like and I know now know what some of the features are. I'm going to have to wait several months before I can have a real opinion on it. The uh, 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 Ben Clymer, who is a, a watch blogger, uh, was invited to the event and he wrote about it on his uh, watch blog, Hodinkee, which is great. And he said some things I agree with, which is that Apple absolutely nailed the bracelet. The yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, that this is this was very clever. It's easy to change the uh, the bracelet. They did uh, 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 one of the bands is something that I, I just really love, which is these this this link band that actually Milanese. is. Well, and I think yeah. that one of the what is the name of that? Because that, that's Milanese. Milanese. I love a Milanese band. You don't see them anymore. That that so I would my, buy the watch my, just because of the band. My grandfather's well, retirement watch from the fifties has that exactly. Uh, the great thing is is that that is that. Everyone's going to get to say one of these bands is the one that I love. <laughs> There's so right. many but options, I feel so. like the watch they completely stumbled on. Well, how so? Well, and you're right, Andy. We'll know when we get it. Uh, it's going to not going to be cheap, so it's not going to be something I'm going to be happy about buying. Yeah. Uh, you're going to get a night watch, Leo. Huh? Three fifty. Three fifty is the. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Renee, no, go I ahead. A, I was just making a dumb joke. I said you're going to get a day and a night watch. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm well, you can get a day and a night bracelet, which is good. Yeah, and they're they're easy to swap out. Easy. So that's where all the that's where all the fashion stuff is going. That's that's why I think that part of this design is really really smart because they realized that it's impossible to come up with one wash design that everyone's going to like. So they came up with a rather bland design for the three hundred and fifty dollar part of it. But then for the fashion part of it, you can have a right. band for workday. You can have a band you swap into when you're going out at night. Another band you wear for a three day weekend elsewhere, and you can easily swap them out. I thought that was very very smart. I'm really disliking the watch part, but I love. I love the, I'm going to buy the <laughs> Milanese band. There's a lot to unpack here. I mean, some people think that it's complicated for an Apple product, but you get two choices of size, like with the phones. You get three choices of finishes, just like with the phones. And you get a bunch of choice of bands, just like you do with the cases. So, I mean, in terms of an Apple product, it is more fashionable, but it's not really more complicated. I understand a lot of what Andy is saying. Like, I, there was not that moment, like when the iPad was introduced and Steve Jobs stood there and he said, this is a MacBook and this is an iPhone. And we have to prove to you that they're, the tablet deserves to be in between that it does some things better than the macbook and some things better than the phone and we didn't have that moment we didn't have that statement from tim cook of saying this is the the, the raison d'etre for the for the watch we got a list of features some of them i was absolutely expecting like some of them make so much sense like the logging for health and fitness the notifications and uh, glanceable widgets the authentication and things for apple uh, payment which is super clever because it uses the sensors to maintain contact with your skin <laughs> yep. and if it breaks it then you know you have to you have to uh, re-authenticate there's a lot of things that they just do in there the communications thing was a big wild card for me and it's got a dedicated so that double tapping that button brings up payments, single tapping it brings up your contacts. And that to me was the wild card. That was the only thing where ever for an Apple product relaunch, I thought maybe they did too much instead. Of, usually it's always like they did too little, but I'm sure they'll get to more of it in the next version. That was too much. But 
it's interesting. It's interesting all the things you could do. Yes, the emoji look like Yahoo circa 1980 <laughs> and the heartbeat thing. You're probably not going to use that with too many people because it would just yeah. be awkward. It's cute. Some people. Yeah. I don't even yeah, want to but, use it with my girlfriend. I mean, it's just, yeah. I feel, also, I, I have also, said, and I, uh, this is a bit of a joke, but I, it's somewhat sincere that this was a watch designed for Japanese schoolgirls. <laughs> Rich but Japanese schoolgirls. If, if the minimum buy-in is three hundred fifty dollars, and remember that's well, the minimum. Maybe, that's but the maybe cheapest watch. In, in, in maybe the, the the truth in the nugget of truth in that is that this is aimed at a younger generation that has a different idea of what a watch is. In other words, no idea. Yeah. For the price, no. though, I mean, you can read the Haruki blog, and I met him there. Uh, John Gruber and I had the opportunity to meet and speak with him for a few minutes. Fascinating, really smart guy. This is incredibly valuable for the price. Apple is not surcharging here. It, I believe he said you just can't get watches of this quality no, at that price. that's true. And it'll be interesting to see because there's a full, there's a solid gold, you know, 18 karat and rose gold watch. And you can, Rolexes can cost tens of thousands of dollars, you know, even for stainless steel, let alone gold. So it'll be interesting to see what that price point is. But I don't think anyone... And I don't think Andy was saying this, but I, this is expensive in terms of consumer electronics, but it's not expensive in terms of watches. The difference, the huge well, difference is, though, that you can buy a Rolex and 100 years from now, that's still going to yeah, be a great Rolex. Ben made exactly. that point. This exactly. is not How an heirloom. This is going to be out of date in two years. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's great value for the money, but the longevity of it. And we don't know if they're going to make a new one every year like iPhones or every two right. to four years like Apple TVs. So there's, a, there's a ton of would questions. You, would you, uh, both of you, I presume, put it on your wrist. Mm -hmm. to, to the person looking at the photograph, it looks like a, a metal pillow. It looks big. <laughs> not, and it isn't physically big. It's light, and it's not much bigger than an actual watch. It just feels like a... I something. Did it feel clunky on your wrist? Didn't feel clunky on mine. Uh, the stainless steel one is heavier than you would expect it to be because I think in your mind you're thinking digital watch and not stainless steel watch. Right. But when I compared it to real like Omega watches that I've had experience with, it's definitely within that bandwidth. Uh, it is thick for a watch. I, I just think it's it's definitely within the bandwidth of what you could reasonably expect a watch to be in terms of size. It will be thick. It will be a little bit heavier. It will be a little bit larger, uh, the 42 millimeter size anyway, than you might expect. I mean, here's here, here is my previous uh, Apple watch. Uh, which I which I wasn't able to find until I want I so it's, wanted to wear this at at the event. It's dog uh, cow. Yes, it's, it's Claris. Claris. Uh, and so a lot. See, the thing is, a lot of people are used to wearing like smaller watches like this, and when that's the case, a larger smartwatch like this is freaking huge. But I feel like the Moto but, 360 style wise is great. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think this. I think it's I considerably this, lacking in features, but the style is great. Yeah, I mean, this is this is like the ultimate. Like, it's just a blank slate. It yeah. does not try to impress, yeah. uh, and it's, it's very minimalist. And so, this I think that the Apple Watch might get a little bit more attention, maybe than this, but only because, really, only because it's square, not because it's so big. It really does. I've I've always been the guy who, you know, because I, I write so much about phones, I like to see what other people are using and how they're using it. So I'm the person who's like, I'm reading my book on the subway, but I'm glancing to see, okay, you're using a Samsung. It's not a says, oh, it's an S. No, it's not an S5, it's an S4. Oh, wow, she's using it in landscape mode. That's interesting. Now I'm actually, on the, especially on the flight over to Cooper, uh, over to San Francisco and back again, I was really paying attention to the watches on people's wrists. And I saw women's watches that was even bigger, were even bigger than this. I saw men's watches that were gigantic. Yeah. I saw some that were tiny. I think that saving grace is just going to be that there is such a variety of, 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 of wristwatches out there that... You can have a watch that looks a little bit weird, and it won't really pe take much attention. And the it doesn't feel quality, weird to you. It doesn't. It doesn't feel weird. Again, okay. it's a little, the stainless steel one, the forty-two millimeter, is rather heavy. But again, if you're not used to, it's within the bandwidth of what you'd expect a normal How watch to be. How na about uh, navigating with that stem? That seems very non-Apple to me. I mean, that's it's, a very it's strange choice. It's very click choice. wheel, Leo. It, it's a very yeah. click. So the, the basic thing with that is you, it is still a multi-touch display. It has the new force touch. But they didn't think that pinch sort of gestures or multi-touch, like multi-finger gestures were good on the small screen or that they'd obscure the screen too much. So they went back to the click wheel idea of you move the control off of it and almost, you know, like how a Mac works where the control is, is disintermediated, from, is intermediated from the screen. And you can use that to sort of do the, the brute force navigation and then 
multi-touch. But I forgot to mention something earlier that I want to sort of conclude with. Uh, to me, the case to be made for this watch is convenience. And they did hit on the features, but I don't think they sort of wrapped it together. For example, my sister already, she leaves her phone in her office when she does rounds at the hospital and just has her watch with her because that's the paging system. My mom already wants to get it because her phone is in her purse. And I assume when you have a bigger phone, it's going to stay in the purse much longer. And she thinks she misses calls and messages, but on her wrist, she won't do that. Tim Cook mentioned controlling his Apple TV with it. There's home kit coming. So you'll be able to control all sorts of accessories and appliances. So the idea that this can be a, a much more readily available instrument than your phone or certainly your tablet, yeah. I think is the big selling point for this. I just don't think that they made it as plain yeah. as they had with well, iPhones and, or iPads. Did you did you I'm catch curious. Tim? Did you catch Kim saying Tim saying, "Oh, also I'm con controlling music on my computer on iTunes," which I think was the only even oblique mention of controlling stuff actually on your desktop. Oh yeah, and to be clear, you can run with, with this. You can leave your phone at home and run with this. It has yeah. local music. It does. It doesn't have GPS, but it does almost. It does a lot of things locally. It does payments locally, so you don't have to be bound to your phone. Well, yeah. and I think also, you know, how it interacts with the entire home is going to be very interesting with a home kit. So when you have, you know, you're not going to have to have your phone. You walk into your house, and then there's a lot of interaction that's possible there um, that that could be uh, could be very very interesting. Yeah, I'm just I'm just worried that they, if of, of the list of things that I'm maybe a little bit concerned about, or the questions I really want to have settled next year is that did they actually over design it? Did they say that, again? There's so many controls on this. I was also a little bit concerned when they were talking about it. Here's why the click wheel is such a good idea because it allows you to navigate the interface without blocking the screen. And I'm, again, I'm thinking. But again, this is a watch that I'm going to be not really going to be staring at for 10 minutes at a time. Do, is it okay to simply put a simple control here on the face and I tap that control to make it do the thing that I want it to do? Or do you really envision me standing there on the side of the road just like this for five or 10 minutes engrossed in this task that I'm supposed to be doing? And I, I, I was seeing the demonstrator, maybe uh, Renee had a different experience, but I was watching the demonstrator operate it. And there were times when he was going like this and then that and then this and then this and then this and then that and then this. So again, I'm, I really am looking forward to my first hands-on experience because it seems as though I'd much rather have fewer controls on a touch screen, but that's the only thing I ever have to deal with than, okay, this is a scrolly thing. Nope, this is a tappy thing. Oh no, this is a tap and press thing. Oh no, now I got to tap this one. Wait, do I have to double tap that or do I press and hold that? It's, uh, I'm not used to seeing that much stuff on an Apple device, I, I, particularly something that that small. And a lot of it is dictated by the variety of things you can do with the watch. I almost feel like they tried to put too much into it well we'll see of course everything i'm saying is predicated yeah, on the notion we haven't don't have it yet and won't have it for a few months um but but i'm i'm concerned and i don't feel like looking at it uh apple has somehow magically solved the watch issue well i think that i think that the watch is something that's it's an important vertical that they have to get into they have a uh uh, they have a market for it. I mean, they're going to sell a lot of them no matter what because people are going to experiment with it. They're already Apple users and, and they de definitely have to play with the wearable market. I think there's a lot of people who are wearing Nike wristbands and would prefer to just have it all in one. So I think the biometrics was key to making sure that it really solved a couple problems and why people are wearing multiple uh, wristbands. And so I think that that takes some of that out for some people. And then I, but I think that it also, you know, allows them to start to see what's going to work in the market. I think that the advantage that Apple has of going slowly is they get to think about it a lot. The disadvantage is they have a very low iteration rate. And so I think that it's important for them, unlike, you know, all these, while the, all these, you can wait for a certain period of time, but all of these other manufacturers are getting real data about how users use point. the product. And I think that Apple had to put something out there and just start to see. People right. don't like it. There'll be another version in another year, and yeah. it'll look different based on that. I mean, our, our you know, where the the new six is is light years different than you know mm -hmm. the, the original iPhone. Yeah. So someone on Twitter mentioned something that I wish I were clever enough to have spotted immediately. That one reason it's interesting that they that the icons are not on a grid; they're in sort of a honeycomb sort of configuration. And one of the reasons for that must be that because that way you can get more icons with round icons. You get more of them per unit in, unit. But someone also pointed out that gee, that would also fit better on a round display in the future if they decided to do that. I don't know if that means anything, but it's like, oh, that would be true, wouldn't it? That is one of the one of the things. Maybe I don't know if we learned this that Apple didn't learn uh, was that the demand, in, at least in Android Wear, was for the round watch, not for the square watch. Uh, yeah, and, and I think when up. we were doing the event, uh, you were you were of course in the event, but we, we were talking on, during our live telecast. That was the first thing that came to mind: is it's not round. We thought that we thought Apple would go round. 
It's 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 so hard to. I, I think the 360 does a good job with it, but nonetheless, if you're trying to do something that has a little bit more ambitious of a user inter user interface, you lose a lot by losing those corners. Now suddenly, all of your buttons really have to be round. Uh, you really can't do. It's it's it doesn't naturally fit into this scroll up, scroll down, select sort of motif that they've got there. So I can certainly understand it. I, I, again, I think it works well in the 360, but it really does take a certain knack to design a device that way. Yeah. Um, I, I will say that the, the fitness stuff it works. I think that was the only thing that they really showed start to finish, uh, and no wonder because boy is that impressive. I would love to have this on my wrist because just like I, I got an I got an MPG uh, meter uh, on my car a few years ago, and it absolutely immediately changed the way I drive because now I have a score for how carefully I drive now, uh, and I could. As, a, as I'm watching these demonstrations, these poor, poor, incredibly good looking, incredibly fit people who have to like be on a tread on treadmills like all all afternoon long demonstrating how well these watches work. Uh, I could really see how that would get me to motivated to try to uh, get out of the chair a little bit more to exercise a little bit more because it turns it into a very simple Nintendo like here are three circles. You want all these circles mm -hmm. to be complete by the end of the day. And here's how far you are on this circle. You're doing great on this circle, but you want this circle. Go to it. Go, Andy, go. <laughs> um, we haven't even talked about the phones. <laughs> phones? There are phones? Phones. Four million sold in the first 24 hours. That's a record for Apple, right? Yeah. Uh, and, I, boy, I tell you, I was up at midnight on Friday, and uh, Apple Store was not. Uh, <laughs> 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. You know, I, I know a lot of people were complaining about that, but I have to say, when I grow up, I want a company that shuts down yeah. all of the phone companies and my own <laughs> giant website. I mean, that's that's what I want for a product. That that is what well, you want for product launch. But, but right, but, not the what you want, but that's not not a bad problem. I do feel like Apple should have opened the store at midnight, whether it was working or not. It wasn't even open. It's like right. they said they were going to open it at midnight. They should have opened it. Well, I, I mean, the links like if, if you got a. If you got a direct link, it okay. it worked. It was oh, it just did. the front page. Yeah, so okay. I, mean, I got I got mine reserved almost immediately because I knew the link that went so right to the smart. Instagram. Smart. I tweeted it. <laughs> I didn't I didn't hog it for myself. I shared. So that's interesting. So it was maybe a failure uh, of the servers uh, on the due to the onslaught well, it, of people. It, it wasn't, went up and down a couple of times. I had to reload several times okay. to get to the. I thought they just didn't bother opening it for a couple of hours. Like oh, you know, we're uh, getting lunch. Got some pie. Yeah, get we'll get to it. <laughs> So it wasn't that it wasn't open. It was open. Yeah, and fits and starts. It was just jammed. I went to all the U.S. carriers, bought one on Sprint for my mom. I was able to, you know, Sprint was up and down, but I was able to get at least through the process. Um, bought one for myself from Verizon, which seemed to have pretty snappy servers the whole time. Uh, AT&T up and down, T-Mobile... Uh, didn't open for a day. <laughs> they, they couldn't. Well, they, the problem is that T-Mobile got. I, I decided to move to T-Mobile. Everybody I, yeah. I unlocked T-Mobile. That's the way to go. Well, and and I think for me it was Wi-Fi calling. You know, I, right. I just decided. Well, and that I've just had it with AT and T. I just couldn't take it any longer. I, I, even though I had the the free grandfathered version of everything, they just slow you down anyway. Right. Once you get a lot of them anyway, it wasn't worth it. And you know, I, it, no matter how much I ask AT and T not to turn my phone off when I'm overseas, they I know they do. <laughs> T-Mobile free, uh, unlimited overseas calling, texting, and data. Wi although it's two G data, yeah. but Wi still all the phones at the all the iPhone sixes in the demo area were running T-Mobile. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think that's for me. That's going to be the way uh, I'm going to use it. And, uh, and actually, the the, the two most. Oh, go ahead. Uh, just just quick quick uh, uh, postscript to that. They're all they also all had the Beats app on it. Yes. Yes. Really? And John Legere yeah. had an open bar. So, is that true that uh, all the iPhone sixes will have Beats? All the, all, all no, I'm, I'm saying all the all the demo phones that were on that area so had Beats. the Beats app installed. Well, we'll know. We'll find out Friday. Yeah, uh, and now, I probably now, will do an unboxing depending when it arrives. Uh, the one I was able to get from Verizon was the 4.7. It looks like the 4.7 did not sell as well as the uh, five and a half inch. No, the five yeah. and a half inches many. were constrained. There was they just were there were fewer of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also, I think a lot of people just assumed that the most expensive iPhone was the best one. They had to have that. Nine hundred fifty bucks. I don't care. <laughs> I'm buying. I, know, that. I don't know how many people like uh, Apple. People are funny because you know we work in the business, so we've all tried Galaxy Notes and we've all tried Galaxy Megas and HTC Giant Heads, whatever those. I forget what those one was called. I, I, HTC Mat, whatever they were. We've tried these big phones. We know what they feel like. We know what they mean. But I think a lot of people who have only bought iPhones. 
uh, they don't really understand how big a phone, like how big a big phone is. And they just bought it because it looked like the new flagship. <laughs> and it'll be interesting to see the reaction to it when it arrives because it, the iPhone uh, 6 doesn't feel that much bigger because it's thin, it's round, and it's light. The iPhone 6 Plus is a bigger phone. Yeah. It's as big as my One Plus One, which, because uh, yeah. we've made, Burke made up uh, the iBurke 6 and 6 Plus. <laughs> And uh, as a lot of, this was the thing to do. Uh, Ars Technica put out PDF templates so you could, and I know a lot of people who are carrying around on Thursday both sizes just to see which one they could live yeah. with. Uh, the 4.7 is already bigger than the existing iPhone, but the 5. I have Nexus 7s yeah. in my pocket. I don't, I'm not afraid. Yeah. I'm not afraid okay, either. This is exactly the same. The iPhone yeah. 6 Plus, exactly the same as the One Plus One, right? And or I the Galaxy Note. I got the yeah. Note 2, which is almost exactly the same size. Yeah. It's a little bit wider and a little bit shorter. So I know I can live with that. And yeah, it's, well, I think it well, really I think is it's interesting that the, that the feature set wasn't the same either. I mean, for me, I mean, I got the Plus, but for me, the most important feature on the phone is the camera. Oh, I yes. And, and so the, the, yeah, so the optical image, image stabilization is exactly why I bought the 6 Plus. Not, I probably would have bought the smaller one if, if all the features were identical. Oh, and, and the battery size, life, Alex. I think I probably would have gotten the smaller one. What? Yeah. The battery life is way longer on the 6 Plus, too. Yeah. Which will be good. Yeah. And, and these are actually, yeah, by the way, the, 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 the most popular questions that we have on on uh, on the question engine is about the iPhone 6. Aaron Mailer asks, uh, what are your thoughts on Apple's um, uh, going with 1664 and 128 and dropping the 32 um, in the memory on the iPhone 6? That's our most popular question people want to yeah. know. I just well, think 32 may... is probably the you, – you either get the smallest one that's cheap – or you're going to go for something... Well, it's pretty obvious. You know, they wanted to have a starting price that looked low. Mm -hmm. So they made a 16, but they don't expect anybody to buy a 16. <laughs> and uh, that's... They, there was really no... Re the real question is, why is there a 16? Not why is there not a 32? Marketing, there's always three marketing tiers, right? Right. Small. <laughs> that's the real question. Yeah. And and right. uh, I agree, a 32 for a lot of us would be exactly right. I got 64. Yeah. Um, but it really, um, I, I think it really is the difference between economy, business class, and first class, where uh, there has to be, a, there has to be, I, I, I'm not sure that's, that's going to be as unpopular as people might think it is. There are people who just need, how, are, they're on a budget, they have $199 to spend, and they're grateful to get this this right. phone as cheap as they can possibly get it. Once you get, a, once you get a step over that, there are people who are, don't have to necessarily be on a real budget. So why not buy something that has a real step up, four right. times as much memory as opposed to just an extra 16, uh, and then then there's first class, which is money is really no object. I'm willing to spend as much on an iPad as I uh, as I would on this phone, and that's where the 128 comes in, really. I couldn't believe I was, I, was, I I couldn't believe that you know I went to T-Mobile, so it's unlocked, and I just paid the full price up front, and and I was like nine hundred and forty nine dollars for what for a phone? <laughs> this is the same as a computer. I guess I, it is a computer, but I mean I'm just Let's like do, wow. It's let, like I got to interrupt you because we're out of time. I want to do a couple of quick question engines. We got another ad, and then we're going to do okay. your picks. But we there's no way we can get this done in seven minutes. So. Okay. Let's do a couple a couple of quick okay, okay, here we go. question engines. Here we go. Speed round. Um, next one is from Jim M. And he says, Renee or Andy, how heavy did the iPhone 6 uh, feel? Does the thinness make up for some of the huge size and weight? And he's from Jim yes, M. from San Diego. Uh, it feels pretty light. The round edges, I think, really what make it feel light and thin. Uh, I did not feel as though the 6 Plus was obnoxiously heavy. I had, I had them both in each hands, and I did not feel as though the 6 Plus was super, super, super heavy compared. No. Yeah. Okay. Here's Andy. Next. Next question is from uh, Mike Wren. He said, what are your favorite iOS optimized apps that will be released day one? Uh, an an embargo on most of them. Yeah, exactly. I'm about to say <laughs> apps that I'm not allowed to talk about. <laughs> oh, interesting. So there's stuff we haven't seen. In fact, that's one of the things Tim how, Cook said how, on how, the... How, uh, about, how about the, the Swift keyboard, which is now, which is, I can talk Swift about. Swift key is, is awesome. The, yeah, yeah when, and when, one you, password you get, looks really good. Yeah, once you once you the first time that you see that you you use the sort of keyboard where you're just sliding from one place to another, oh boy, that is the fastest way to type. It blows away. Tap 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 tap. You will love it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I hope LastPass does extensions as well because I would like to be able to fill Me in too. auto fill and stuff. I think they said they would. And Next. Uh, do you want to do, do you want another one, Leo? Or do you yeah, want to one more. move on? One more. Last last question is from Eric. Uh, Dickery, Dickera, Dickara, Dickara, uh, Dickara, Dickara, yeah. Dickara. <laughs> uh, um, Nashville. Uh, he said, "We will we finally see an update to the Apple TV this fall? <laughs> this, this spring, next spring. This is the yeah. I don't uh, we think might so as well just say the top questions will always be Mac Mini, Apple TV, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and will we see an event in October? Uh, I think if the Mac stuff is ready, we will. 
Yeah, not the, the iPad the next, stuff, the, the down, Mac the stuff. The, down, iPad, course, the iPads was, uh, are touch ID. I mean, they're not as they're not. I mean, they're, they're going to be nice new iPads, but it's the iPads toxic. Uh, it's the talk cycle for the iPad, so it's not going to be as big a deal as it was last year with you know Retina iPad Mini and why even do an event there? Just press well, if it. the new Macs are there, then you can yep. do the iPad and the new yep. Macs. And the new Macs are Broadwell. I mean, is there what is the yeah. new? It's the new chip Intel chipset. Yeah, new Mac Mini. So it's not even whether they're ready; it's whether Hopefully. Intel's ready. Yeah. <laughs> Frankly, I don't even want to guess yeah. the Mac Mini at this point, or Apple TV. Apple TV, Apple I don't TV think it's going to be this year. Uh, but Mac, the new Mac Mini, I'm ready. I'm ready to just get a press release tomorrow saying they've they've updated. <laughs> I'm ready for a big event in October. I'm ready to wait to 2015. I absolutely don't know. It makes they have to update it soon. But right. I have no idea when it's happening. I'm going to throw in one a Leo question from the Question Engine. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Cook said to Charlie Rose. There is stuff we have not announced. There is stuff no one has even rumored. Gentlemen, what do you think? Absolutely true. No, no, not yes or no. <laughs> what is it? Well, I mean, like, he said it really well. There's things that they're never going to release. Like they've had television uh, sets in the labs for years and release. they've chosen not okay. to release them because they don't think that that's a good, well, maybe not never, but you know, they don't think it's a good product yet. The iPad was not released the iPhone was then the iPad was released I me mean, they they almost anything you could think of that you that Apple could do they have tried and then right. they make decisions based on the product how do we feel about the bump you know what I'm talking oh, about yes. the camera bump I wish it was bigger with a bigger chip you want a bigger bump <laughs> yeah I just want a big bump I want a big chip in there yeah. you know they yeah. uh, I don't know if you saw Panasonic 15. just released a basically a one inch yeah Sensor, yeah. you is know, that wild oh, on a yeah, on an Android, Android device? Phone. Isn't that wild? Like a Android Android phone with and a man, that camera. that phone has a bump. Yeah, yeah. It, it's got it, a baby that, bump. If Apple gave us a version of that, I would be the first in line. Okay. And if anyone I'm, got in front I'm, of me, I asked the wrong person. Right obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Of course, Alex wants a bump. Great camera. Do you think people will? Uh, I don't. It's not that big a bump that people are going to. You be got. It. You got to be a really turbo design wonk to complain about okay. that. That's it's just like the like iPod dumb. Touch from last yeah. from two years ago. Yeah. What? It had a bump. I didn't even notice. Yep. Okay. Can't make things. Uh, cameras do not like being thin. <laughs> They're going to yep. bump if you right. have to. You, you you could ask yourself why not make it just a little bit thicker and just make it a you know and and incorporate it. But who cares? Who cares? You know. Our I'm show about the weight. Our show today brought to you by the good buddies. The good folks at Linda.com. Linda Wyman is a longtime friend. She used to come on the Screensavers all the time to uh, talk about her books on web, de web development. She has been teaching people how to use computers better for uh, more than a decade. And she has the best site for this, lynda.com. It's an easy and affordable way to help you learn. You can instantly stream thousands of courses created by experts in the field, great trainers too, beautifully produced. We're not talking here those, you know, cheesy YouTube videos. This stuff is nice. They include uh, searchable text transcripts so you can find exactly the part of the training you want, playlists, even certificates of course completion that you can publish to your LinkedIn if you like. Whether you're a beginner or advanced, lynda.com has courses for all experience levels, and you can learn on the go with the iPhone, the iPad, and the Android app. And it's 25 bucks a month for everything, over 100,000 video tutorials in every area. Just go to lynda.com and browse the library. You'll be amazed at the stuff that's in here. New courses all the time. Here's a code clinic on Ruby, Python, PHP, rapid prototyping for product design, up and running with SlideShare, SharePoint Designer 2013, project-based learning, STEM to STEAM, Ah, here's one, a first look at the Swift programming language. Now, this I might want to do. This looks really interesting. And you can watch it now for free if you go to lynda.com slash MacBreak, seven days free, their whole thing, everything. If you get the premium plan, by the way, you can download the courses to your iPhone, iPad, and Android and watch them on the plane or offline anywhere, plus download project files and practice along with the instructor. They've got courses on Monday productivity pointers. I work for the iPad. Office for the iPad, Songwriting and Logic Pro. But this one, I'm going to do the Swift one. This looks really good. I'm really pleased to see this. There's no better way to learn than lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com, slash MacBreak. Go there right now for a free seven-day trial of lynda.com. All right, everybody. It's time for your picks of the week. We're going to start with Mr. Andy Notko. Okay, let me just show off one of the other features of Crane Cam 3000, the future of video <laughs> podcasting. Oh, uh, oh. I have 
Ooh. There you go. See? Ah. Uh, I have been uh, sort of interested in <laughs> blown away. Uh, you, you're right to be blown away. Uh, I have been super interested in uh, uh, in uh, folding Bluetooth keyboards ever since I knew that there was going to be a, uh, uh, a, uh, a iPhone 6 coming. So I have ordered... A Ooh, one of these. What this is, is off of uh, I, this just arrived today. Sorry, Cream Can Three Thousand is still emerging technology. This is the <laughs> this is the footprint. This is the iWorks uh, folding Bluetooth keyboard. Here we see the footprint basically of the iPhone Six. I was looking for something Six oh. Plus. I was looking for something that was roughly exactly that same size, uh, and it comes in this little slide off case right here that doubles as a stand. So you put that right about there. Unfold it like this. And then drop your iPhone 6 right there. Uh, and it's not optimal because it has this gap in the middle, but I was actually writing a bit with it this morning because uh, it arrived uh, kind of around 10 or 11. And you can actually get a good fast type on it. Uh, the fa the nice thing about it is that this is multiple operating system. It will work Android, Windows, or iOS. Uh, but the nice thing about it is that it has a really nice space bar here. So as you're sort of getting used to the split keyboard, you can at least keep your thumbs uh, right where they need to be. Uh, it's not like this other one that I had uh, in storage that I was pulling out. This is uh, made by Verbatim. It's also available uh, on Amazon. Uh, and it's much bigger, which is nice. Uh, but the thing is that that, key, that space bar is not quite as big. So this is a nice it's, – it's nice because you can really take a risk uh, – take a flutter on it, take a risk on it. Because this is only about 30 35 bucks. It's, it's made out of metal. It's well done. It has this really nice little carrying case with it so uh, that you probably won't dent the metal uh, as you're carrying this around. And as I said, what I'm looking for is something that's almost exactly the same size as the iPhone 6 so I can just basically have this uh, as a sandwich. And so I will continue to look because uh, Lord knows that back in the days of Palm, there were some really amazing double folding keyboards out there. Uh, but for now, this is my pick. If you want, if you've got an iPhone 6 Plus coming and you're looking for that alluring idea idea of I want to be able to travel maybe for the day or, 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 or an overnight with just writing and working on my iPhone 6 Plus and not even take an iPad with me, this might be the nicest, easily available solution that's out there. Very nice. And a good price. I works, Under 30 bucks. I works a, a Bluetooth, folding Bluetooth keyboard. I, live from the Crane Cam 3000, the future, the future of video, of po video podcasting. podcasting. Thank you very much. Respect <laughs> respect is due. Yeah, Mandy Nako. <laughs> I W E R K Z, right? Exactly. Okay. Renee Ritchie, you're, you're well, Andy's adjusting the crane cam three thousand the future of video podcast. Let me just adjust these gyroscopes. <laughs> Get back to the video. All I wanted was a crane shot. Just one Aussie crane shot. Uh Renee Ritchie has a, these picks of the day. So I, I'm copping out a little bit here because as I was going through all the choices, I realized that all the really exciting stuff is coming tomorrow. Some of them are slipping out today. Like I got an update for um, some language apps that are already installing widgets. So you can find some iOS updates today, but the, the, the flood of them is going to come tomorrow. And almost every major app that you can imagine is going to have a new version available for you. And they're going to do widgets. They're going to do keyboards. You know, Andy already mentioned uh, SwiftKey. There's going to be Flex. There's going to be all sorts of fantastic apps. Uh, one password has shown off theirs. It's hard for me to keep straight which ones are announced and which ones aren't. So I don't want to make any mistakes. But um, my pick of the week is going to the App Store tomorrow once you have iOS 8 installed and just updating everything and then enjoying all the sharing extensions, the action extensions, the widgets, everything that iOS 8 is going to give you with those because it's, it is really going to be like having a, a whole new phone. Very cool. Well, well, you know, we're going to be back next week. I'm going to have to pick from all those, Leo. It's going to be really hard. We'll have, and we'll all have, I hope. Did everybody get an iPhone ordered but in time? Yep. I'm, right. I'm going to have to wait for a while. Uh-oh. I mean, I, I ordered it, but... I was late. I somebody said that it's not till Thanksgiving now if you order a six plus. Oh, I'm not that. I don't have to wait that long, but I do have to wait. I think I'm like three or four weeks. <laughs> That's yeah. depressing. American yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah, we we Ameri not even Canadian thanks American Thanksgiving. Because I was thinking October. That's not too bad. Oh wait a minute. Oh November, <laughs> late November, my birthday. Alex Lindsay, your pick of the week. So we we have this this issue a lot that where we um, are 
working in one place in the world and we need something to be edited in another place in the world. And so a lot of times the way we manage that is, and it needs to be done like overnight, it needs to be done really quickly. So we'll compress this down to H.264 and then we'll put it on Dropbox and then someone else will pull it down on the other side. And the, the, the issue is, is then reconverting it back to Apple ProRes or to DNX, depending on who's grabbing it. And so the, the, the question is, how do, you, how do you do that? And a lot of people just use Compressor um, um, to do that. Uh, we have found, I, I've been testing this new piece of software called Edit Ready. It's by Divergent Media. And, um, and Edit Ready is a, um, it's an application that all it does is just convert your media back to, uh, back to something that you can edit easily with. And so um, while a lot of these applications, we'll talk about this, this is something that, um, and you know, I, Divergent sent it to me to test it. I've used almost a lot of their other software. And you know, it took me a little while. I've, I've had it for a while. I was like, well, I don't know if I really need this and everything else. But there's two things that have happened uh, that that number one is being able to pass that that back and forth and, and send it over to someone have them reconvert it to apple prores and throw it into the rest of the pipeline um, as well as there are some files that i can't get quicktime on a mac to open i don't know why they're mp4s that are written by it appears to be a, the adobe um you know uh, compression suite uh for some reason they just won't open you, you see they open up and you see just a white screen and for, and for you know on on uh, mac on quicktime 10 and also on quicktime 7 which we still use um uh we can't get it to open and we find that edit ready is a great, great way to convert that so if that ever becomes a problem for you that saved our our uh, bacon uh, last week um but uh but anyway so edit ready is the is the software it's not very expensive i can't remember how sounds like something we need doesn't it's it, Chad? Because really we get files in all kinds of all formats. the time. And, yeah. and yeah. what Any you just mentioned, time. fifty bucks. That's yeah, awesome. having yeah. having some sort of video file that you can't play. I record on a PC. I need to give files to someone all else all the time. That happens. Yeah. So, so anything that that, that all order quick time, it. it'll convert back to Apple ProRes. So it doesn't really. It's not like we don't a use. Big Pro, we're, we're moving away from ProRes, obviously, because we're going to Premiere Pro, but uh, it supports Premiere Pro format too. So. Yep. Yep. So, so it's uh, it's uh, anyway, it's a great, great little app, great little utility. What is what is the format for Premiere Pro? Uh, I imagine it can read Pro. Anything. <laughs> anything, yeah, anything. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we don't need this. It feels Flash. like we do need this. Uh, I mean, currently in our in our Final Cut Pro Seven uh, we use pipeline, for that, right? we need yeah. something like Edit Ready. Yeah. But and that's why we use the Sound Devices Recorder because we're recording to ProRes on that. But I believe the sound devices we bought will record also to uh, an Adobe format that we can use. Well, I think that I think that Adobe on the Mac, I think it'll still, if, you're, if you're using a Mac, I think we'll still no PCs. Use Apple ProRes. You're going to go to PCs. Well, we already bought them. Wow. A couple of weeks, we're going to be uh, fully converted to Pro, Premiere Pro on uh, on monster PCs. I know I shouldn't even be doing Mac Break Weekly anymore. I, here I am with an Android phone, and our editors use PCs. <laughs> you're well, the I, perfect I person to do it, Leo. <laughs> I love my Macs, and I, have, I can't I have, wait to have, get the iPhone. I have one company that's a Premiere only, and another company that's yeah. Final Cut 10 only. So it's it's just depends on I what just, you're doing. I couldn't bring myself to buy uh, those cute little Mac Pros for all my editors. We really did. We were stuck on the old Mac Pros, and uh, we needed new computers. So it saved us about sixty thousand dollars. There's that. There's that. I was going to talk about these NFC rings. I was all excited. Now that the iPhone has NFC, you can use these NFC rings to do absolutely nothing with it. Um, um, ba -bam, um, <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, this was a Kickstarter project that was really cool. The idea is you put an NFC chip in a ring. I've got this is the one I like the best because it actually looks like an NFC chip in there. Um, these range in price around uh, fifty bucks. Um, and for the Moto, when I get my Moto X, I'll be able to unlock my Moto X just by swiping it over the ring, which is really cool. Um, you can do all sorts of things. You can use it uh, to unlock your door if you have a Bluetooth, or rather a uh, NFC door lock and that kind of thing. But it uh, won't be any good for your iPhone users, so that's not my Stick pick. Stick it in a drawer. Stick it in a drawer. I got a lot of them. <laughs> 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 NFCring.com. I was so excited. I thought, oh, I'll be able to unlock my iPhone. Well, I, I ordered the new Moto X this morning, so it'll work with that. I have uh, like 10 rings of the Mandarin, like one for each phone. Well, it, you could, you know, you can, you can. I could put one on each hand, in each finger. I got 10, 10 rings. And you got 10 phones. And I do have that many phones, so this is going to work nice. 
And I'll just have to uh, use a passcode for my iPhone. You, you look like you're ready to screw over Pete Best. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. It's, it's so sad. <laughs> it's so sad that your fingerprints got burnt off in that fire. You can't use yeah. that uh, <laughs> fingerprint sensor on the iPhone Actually, anymore. you're right. I don't need an <laughs> NFC ring. I've got a fingerprint. That's right. No, that's a good point. You don't need a finger ring. You have a finger. That's You've got a very good point. Uh, our show uh, is over, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you for being here for Mac Break Weekly. We do it every uh, Tuesday morning, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC on twit.tv. It's nice if you could be here live. You can also join us in studio. We've got a very nice crew, six people watching the show and yawning. It's great. It'll, it's all right. It's almost over now. Uh, if you if you want to be here, tickets at twit.tv. We'll put a chair out for you. Um, what else? You can also get the on-demand audio and video after the fact everywhere that uh, podcasts are stored, including iTunes, of course. Uh, there's some wonderful Twit apps and podcast apps for uh, all platforms. You can use those as well. Uh, we thank you for joining us. Thank you, Andy Anako, Chicago Sun Times. Back to work you go. You you just did you file your Moto X review? Uh, it's going to go up probably tomorrow. I'm actually filing right. it today. I was, I was, unfortunately, I got distracted by three different, <laughs> three different by iPhone and iPhone. Crane Cam 3000. The future of video podcasting. <laughs> Ask for it by name. Thank you, uh, Alex Lindsay, for joining us for the first time from your new offices in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's a pleasure. And, and uh, if people want to see the, our, our latest experiment with uh, all kinds of interactive uh, events, uh, go to uh, bit.ly bit.ly slash uh, FCP VUG VUG. So F, FCP VUG 3, our third Final Cut virtual user group. And uh, we built on other table. I'm really loving people. these tables. Every You know, I go next door every uh, every day and there's something else. <laughs> We've got six Wacom tablets now, like these huge, <laughs> like it, it is like, it, it, it is like John Madden on steroids, we get, you know, anyway, so if you want to see what we're doing there, uh, just check out uh, bit.ly uh, slash uh, FCP VUG. FCP, B as in boy? V as in Victor. V so as in Victor. Virtual user group. Virtual user group. And the number three. Three, yep. Okay, I got to type that in correctly. F C P V U G and the number three, yes. and uh, there it is. It's uh, oh, this is cool. And there's the there's the table. Well, and if you click on the little, yeah, you can see the different table. <laughs> and, 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 and 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 we have decided that uh, we're going to change it again. So the next one will be different, a different table. Can we but, have uh, the old ones as you uh, yeah. as you as you go through yeah, those? Yeah, you can have the old one. So the uh, <laughs> so we're done with it. I feel like there's some good plywood in there that we really. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I hate to. It's a really nice table. Keith Keith built it. It's a really really nice table. It's just that we've decided that we need five instead of six because it'd be easier for our camera angles. If you click on any of those little buttons on the side, by the way, this is from Hazu. It, you, it'll take you right to the that question. Oh, that's neat. So you can go right to a question in there. Oh, that's really. This is nice. Yeah. You can't fight in here. This is the war room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it does look like that. This yeah. very strange Lovian. So. And uh, thank you so much, Renee Ritchie. iMore.com. Please tell Peter Cohen I'm not uh, I'm not hurt. And oh, I he's hope a he's big not boy. Hurt. He can take it. I love Peter. He's great. He was a great acquisition for iMore.com. Uh, I, I don't know if you heard, but we have Serenity Caldwell joining yes. us at the end of the month. Sorry. Damn it. I've been trying to hire her Serenity. for months. She said no again and again. Is she moving to Montreal though? No, she's in she's in in Boston where all the cool people are. Actually, I guess is she, was she what part of the MacWorld layoff? No, no she, she actually yeah. Sorry, Andy. Uh, no, she she actually put in her notice a week before. Uh, and, and you know we didn't mention it on the show, and it's a great tragedy. Uh, MacWorld magazine, which started with the Mac in 1984, uh, is no longer going to publish a print edition. They will stay online at MacWorld.com and continue to put content out there. But as a result of the loss of the print edition, almost everybody working at Macworld um, yeah. has left or lost their jobs. Jason Snell has left. Serenity left. Um, and so uh, there's a, a lot of people on the market today who mm -hmm. are good Mac journalists, and I really need to get on the horn with them. Well, I'm glad you got Serenity. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we can work something out. You don't you mind if she do. does podcasts, right? No, not Well, it's, up to, you know, it's, it's, it's Serenity's game. She, she makes her own decisions. It's her game. I'm sure. I'm sure if you, you know, I'm sure if you, you and Renee wanted to get into a bidding war for her services, <laughs> <laughs> right, right here live. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, this is a chance for iMore to snap up some really good people, some of the best yeah. Mac journalists in the world, and uh, it's a tragedy. But you know, print magazine. And by the way, I'm not so happy because the New York Times blamed CNET and Twit for the demise of MacWorld. <laughs> How dare you, Leo? 
<laughs> well, but the point they made, which was germane, was it's hard for a, a monthly print publication to keep up uh, when you've got CNET, Twit, and all these other people doing, you know, filing regularly. But, but quick kudos to Jason Snell and the rest of the team because they what they very quickly they job. they very quickly realized that well we now we really have to be a web magazine that also publishes right. print. They weren't just doing incidental stuff. So right. that's why losing so much of the print team made, is such a big loss to the brand. So uh, I'm very, very sad to see this happen. Yeah. And we've talked to Jason, of course. We're going to see a lot more of Jason on our uh, on our network because he just lives down the road of peace. And he has his own podcast network. And, and he wrote a wonderful piece. Chris Breen wrote a wonderful piece. There's some really good stuff out there. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's a sad moment. We should probably have a moment of silence for Mac World. Okay, that's it. And now... Uh... <laughs> No, I I read Mac. I, you when when uh, you got Mac World free when you uh, like the first edition you got free yep. with your Mac, and yep. that's the first Mac World I got was with my new Mac, and I'll never forget them. And they really were a very important part of the Mac scene for so long. As was Mac User Magazine, mm -hmm. uh, which threw in the towel a while ago. Um, so yeah, no, that was definitely that was the the thing that that I learned what was coming up next. You know, I waited for every yeah. Everyone loves those Mac well. magazines. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Mac Break Weekly. You got to get back to work now because you know what? Break time is over. Yeah.